Greetings and congratulations on your successful download of this podcast episode. Before we commence with a discussion, please be advised of the possibility that offensive material may be expressed by our hosts at any given moment. Rest assured that they are people of fine character who have yet to be charged with a particular crime and harbour no ill will toward anyone. However, they are rather forthright in their opinions and capable of unpleasant language that may upset those of you with obviously superior moral standards. We value your interest in this podcast and hope to prevent such disgusting, filthy words causing you and your loved ones to scream in absolute terror, resulting in years of considerably expensive psychiatric therapy. And now, on with the episode. Again, everyone, welcome back to Drunk Cinema. I'm one of your co-hosts, Charles Skaggs, back in the Drunk Cinema Theater, ready to talk Young Frankenstein with my wonderful co-host Frankenstein. Excuse me, Young Frankenstein. <laughs> Maybe that should be pronounced Young Frankenstein. But it isn't. It's it's Young Frankenstein. <laughs> it's Young Frankenstein. Yes. Why are you talking like that? I don't know. I thought you wanted to. <laughs> As you can see, you can see where we're going to go with this one. So, yeah, Yeah, we're ready. So I'm joined by my wonderful co-host and just delightful person who looks very, very comfortable right now. Zan Sprouse. How are you doing, Zan? Good. I'm doing good. My parents got their vaccines today, so I've been kind of out running around in the cold. So I'm just under a very nice fuzzy blanket. That's good to hear. I get to get my parents their second shot here in two weeks. Nice. And they'll be taken care of. Sweet. Well, we wait and wait and wait for the over 50s for me. Yeah. And the next group below for you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And wait and wait. But anyway, you guys don't care about that. You just care because we're here ready to talk one of, and I don't think this is very controversial, one of the greatest comedies of all time. Oh, indeed. One of the greatest comedies of all time. This is obviously, you know, the 1974 comedy horror film written by Gene Wilder and Mel Brooks, directed by Mel Brooks. And one of the reasons that it kind of worked out this way that we were talking about this one is also, sadly, the, since the last time we talked, when we talked The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai, and hope everybody checked that one out, Cloris Leachman passed. I know. So we get to say uh, this is our kind of sort of tribute to the late, great Frau Blucher. <laughs> yeah she <laughs> and he had to be like marty feldman and be like i'll smile and then happy i just did marty, that. marty feldman is a freaking gem of a human being mm-hmm. yeah cloris leishman passed away on the 27th of january she was 94 years old she had won an oscar for her performance in the last picture show she was on everything so many great tv series she was phyllis on the mary tyler moore show and also on Rhoda and her own spinoff series. And Phyllis and Rhoda, yep. yep. She was Mama on Raising Hope, which was a great little quirky show. If you didn't yep. watch that and you liked My Name is Earl, I think you should check out uh, Raising Hope. And she's just been in so many wonderful movies. She's in this. She's in the freaking Muppet movie. Yep. She's in so many of my favorites. I absolutely love Cloris Leachman. And it's it's sad that she had to go. Yeah, I know her from playing Quinn Hippolyta in the 1975 Wonder Woman TV series. And she was recently Zoria Verchin Yaya on American Gods. Oh, yeah, that's great. Really good on that. She played Grandma Ida on Malcolm in the Middle. And she played Agnes Fremont not once but twice Oh, in the Twilight Zone 1961 version and the Twilight Zone 2003 sequel. Right, she did. And I completely forgot about her in Malcolm in the Middle because her husband in Malcolm in the Middle is Kenneth Mars. Right, who's also in this film. 
also in this movie. Yeah. So playing, of course, Inspector Hans William Friedrich Kemp. Mm hmm. Inspector Kemp. And because we, we chose this one initially, Charles, because this is going to be our episode before Valentine's Day. Mm hmm. And we thought, well, the monster falls in love and the doctor falls in love. Mm hmm. So we thought it was kind of a love story. It's a so double love story. It's a double love story, yeah. yeah. So what better story to talk about on Valentine's Day than, hey, young Frankenstein. Or, excuse me, young Frankenstein. Taffeta, darling. Taffeta. Taffeta, dear. <laughs> and you know, and one of the things we'll talk about is how they're they're very uh, socially distant with the elbows. They are very, because, you know. No, this was 1974 hair. they were doing this. Not the hair. Yeah. <laughs> And he's like afraid to touch her. We'll talk about that. It, yeah. Exactly. So one one more thing I did want to mention on Cloris Leachman before we get going. She also played Nurse Diesel in High Anxiety, another Mel Brooks film, and Madame Defarge in History of the World Part One. Mm-hmm. And Zan probably recognizes her as Mrs. Glick on the Simpsons episode Three Men in a Comic Book. Boys love candy. <laughs> That's a <laughs> yes. Quarters. Drew Corps. Yeah, that's one of my favorite episodes, obviously, because, hey, it centers around comics. So it's it's the, the, the great story where uh, Bart Milhouse and uh, was it Nelson? No, uh, Martin Milhouse. Martin and Martin, Milhouse. And Martin Milhouse. And Bart. Bart. Yeah, they chip in to buy a comic book. Radioactive Man. Yeah, they all chip in to buy Radioactive Man number one. And they just and it and it got destroyed because the three they of us. They fight over it. Yeah. Because the three of us can't share. <laughs> So. so it's a great episode, but yeah. So uh, rest in peace, Cloris Leachman. Sadly, uh, she died from natural causes. Mm -hmm. So as far as I know, it wasn't COVID. Right. She was 94 years old, so. She, she... passed away on Ju January 27th, 2021. So like mm -hmm. I said, right between our Buckaroo Banzai episode and this episode. So Yeah, like a, like about a week and a half ago. Yeah. Today we lost, sadly, a notable actor. Christopher Plummer. Yep. So uh, rest yeah. in peace, Christopher Palmer, who Zan was kind enough to uh, post about from Return of the Pink Panther. Mm -hmm. Or as Clouseau likes to uh, say, Charles Fenton, the notorious Lytton. Charles Fenton, the notorious Lytton. Yes. <laughs> the Phantom, yes. One and the same. One and the same. How can a blind man be a lookout? I don't know. How can an idiot be a policeman? Maybe we need to do a Clouseau movie. Maybe we should do Return of the Pink Panther because I freaking love that movie. All right, we should. I'll put that on the list too. Put that right. on the list. I'm putting it on the list. So the. Also, I think you guys need to tell us what we should get drunk to. Well, you know that's yeah. I, we are taking suggestions, so. Yeah, definitely. You know, and we'll give you our email here at the end for you yep. to do that. So we'd love to hear. We have a pretty notable list as it is. We do, yes, but we have there list. are a lot of movies out there that may not be on the list. So. Mm -hmm. We'll take suggestions. We're taking suggestions. Charles is legit wearing a sweater, and I have never seen him wearing a sweater in my entire life. Who? You. No, I totally. I wear sweaters all the time. I've never seen it. Like, in person, I've never seen it. <laughs> I've literally only ever seen you wear t-shirts. It's, it's like, well, you know, I am indoors, but I was outdoors earlier today. We hang around in the summertime a lot, apparently. <laughs> yes, we do. In the wintertime, you know, well, you know, like I got my coat on. If we're sitting yeah. in a movie theater or something, you know, you can't yeah. tell that I'm wearing a sweater, but yes. Exactly, no. But it's yeah. like, it's like, like, you know, 20 bloody degrees outside, so yes, I'm wearing really a sweater. really damn cold, yeah. yeah. So do you like it? I mean, it's an old one, but yeah. Yeah, just like, I was like, I was like, oh, what's on his shirt tonight? I'm like, nothing. nothing. It's legit a sweater. Yeah. <laughs> Charles usually has, he coordinates his t-shirts and his Funko. Yeah. With whatever we're talking about, so. If I have something related. But Young Frankenstein, right, right. I didn't have anything related. Which is really sad that there are no Young Frankenstein. Can you imagine? Well, you know why? Because yeah. the one that everybody would want would be. Igor. Igor. Yeah. You can't do a Funko of somebody with crazy eyes because Funko all has the same eyeballs. Right. That's true. So, yeah. I mean, you could space them farther apart, but still. It would but look weird. But that's just not going to. Yeah, yeah, it would look That's weird. not going to work. I don't know how you would do that. Unless you yeah. make them extra bulgy. I don't know. Something. I don't. Yeah, that's a good question. That's a good. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe there's maybe there's some fan designs out there. But, yeah, it would be kind of cool because, I mean, you could get a, a Frederick or Frodrick, And you could get Frederick. a Frau Blucher. <laughs> a monster. So, yeah. Yep. Inga. World know that we love him. <laughs> All right. 
So this movie, Young Frankenstein, was released on December 15th, 1974. Oh, my God. You realize that is like 47 years ago? Yeah. Yeah. We Well, this is our oldest film we've discussed so far in drunk cinema. So, it is. Because we film. haven't, you know, up till this point, we've only done the 80s movies. So we're finally going into a different decade and we go backwards into the 70s. Yep. Yep. So, so uh, don't say we don't, you know, branch out because we did. No, we're, we're not. Uh, we're not just 80s kids here. Yeah. It's one hour, 45 minutes long. Received Oscar nominations for two of them, actually, for Best Adapted Screenplay. Yep. Lost to The Godfather Part 2. No surprise there. Yeah, well, you know. Some movie you heard of, The Godfather Part 2. And Best Sound, which it lost to Earthquake. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. Right? Of all the things. A disaster movie. A disaster movie. Right. That's awesome. Well, I kind of noticed when I was scrolling through the Oscars for that year, I noticed that Towering Inferno was up against The Godfather Part 2 for Best Picture. That's not, that can't be right. It was. was that for, I swear are to you God. Serious? I'm I'm serious. Are you I'm serious. It was up there. Oh my God, I'm gonna have to. I, I, I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> Look it up. It's there. I mean, I should know this because I do gold standard, but we are still in the 40s, so I right. haven't been doing a lot of stuff. It'll, stuff. It'll, it's gonna take you like a, a couple of decades to get there, but you'll get there. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that is. And interesting because this was 1974. Both Blazing Saddles and Young Frankenstein were nominated this in the same year. Oh, my fucking God. See? Was I lying or was I dying? <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Yeah. The Towering Inferno was nominated for Best Picture. I did not know that Irwin Allen had an Oscar nomination. Yeah. How do you nominate? How do you nominate? Well, I, I take that back because I know. Because the Academy doesn't like comedies. They like comedies just above science fiction movies and superhero movies. I was actually writing about this last night in my that I keep for gold standard mm-hmm. that there's like, I think, I, I think there's seven comedies that have won Oscars. Yeah. Oscars don't like comedies. They don't like musicals either. There's only been 11. And if that includes Amadeus, if you consider Amadeus a musical, there's been 11 musicals. Otherwise there's only been 10. Okay. And there's been one measly horror movie. And we all know what that is. Yes. The Silence, Silence of the Lambs. Yes. Wow. This is a fantastic list of movies. You have Godfather part two, right? Chinatown. The right. conversation. Chinatown, by the way, if you had asked me, would have been the best picture of 1970. Yeah. By the way, after our discussion on Ghost with the Twin Peaks podcast, when we talked Wild at Heart, uh-huh. I, I watched Chinatown on HBO Max. It's on there right now. So I, okay. so I got to yeah. see Diane Ladd yep. way back in the day. Oh, no. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Chinatown is what I would pick. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Conversation. Uh, Lenny. The Lenny Bruce movie mm-hmm. that had Dustin Hoffman playing Lenny Bruce. Right. And the motherfucking towering inferno. Right. right. Jesus H. Christ. Yeah. Who did like you I, pay off Irwin Allen? Well, like I said, you know, Earthquake and the Towering Inferno nominated in like for best for Academy Awards in that year. I got to tell you, though, I mean, if you're going to have. If you're going to nominate the Towering Inferno, why the hell did you not nominate Young Frankenstein? I'm sorry. But here's the thing. I mean, yeah. the towering and yeah, the greatest okay. disaster movie in the history of disaster movies. Yeah, you kind of glitched up there a little bit. It's the absolute. Oh, did I? I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the towering inferno. Now, to be fair, Irwin Allen also did the Poseidon Adventure, mm-hmm. which is also good. But the towering inferno is a fantastic movie. Yeah, I know. My, lo- my wife, Lori, is obsessed with it. Yeah. Oh, she likes that one? She okay. loves She yeah. loves disaster movies, especially from the 1970s. Maybe we should do The Towering Inferno and get Lori drunk with us. <laughs> she won't. But, you know, it, it's a possibility. I could discuss it with well, her. Maybe, I'll talk maybe to- this summer when we can do movies on my patio again, yeah. you guys can come over and we'll watch that. That would but, be nice. Um, that would be nice. Something to hope for. But, yeah. yeah, here's the thing, you guys. Irwin Allen, if you don't recognize his name, Mm-hmm. is a producer famous for things like Lost in Space, The Time Tunnel, Land of the Giants. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, all that. The, uh, the Fantastic Voyage, right? Fantastic Voyage, yes. Yeah. Uh, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, mm-hmm. all that. He's very schlocky. Yes, so. he's very much a, a B-movie type. 
very much a B movie, B movie, B television. Yeah. Um, and as much as I love the time tunnel, I mean, it's a time, it's a time travel story. It's fantastic. Lori loves, time, uh, or excuse me, not Lori, but Jesse Jackson loves time tunnel. Does he love time tunnel? Yeah. yeah. I had the DVDs and I watched them all once and I wasn't watching them again. Yeah. And I needed the space, but, and I know they're streaming now, but I, we, we've wanted to get that voyage to the bottom of the sea set, but it's really, it's out of print. So it's pricey now, but I have the right. complete series of lost in space. I love Irwin Allen. There's nothing yeah. against Irwin Allen. But, uh, oh, sweet Jesus. <laughs> that is unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, my God. I am sorry I doubted you, Charles. No, that's all right. It's okay. You wouldn't <laughs> trust me. I see how it is. You didn't trust me. Yeah. But, yes. No, I, um, the nothing, right... against Ingrid, nothing against Ingrid Bergman. Mm-hmm. But I think Madeline Kahn should have totally won Best Supporting Actress. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. Either that or Diane Ladd should have won for Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore yeah. because Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore, if you guys don't know what that movie is, if you remember the sitcom, mm-hmm. Alice. Yeah. This, this is, is like that's the what it was based movie. on. Yeah, yeah. This is like the serious movie that Alice was based on. And Diane Ladd plays Flo, like Kiss My Grits. Yes. Like that's Diane Ladd's character. Right. She's fantastic. Yeah. So, wow, that's. Just blew your mind with that, didn't I? Yeah. Uh, oh, score. Yeah, the ship of Daddy Kravitz. I forgot about that movie. Yeah. The score of this movie, Young Frankenstein. John Morris. Baby. John Morris, yes, who Zan and I talked recently when we discussed The Elephant Man on Ghost yep. with the Twin Peaks podcast. Also did, of course, Blazing Saddles, The Producers, High Anxiety, Spaceball, so obviously Mel's go-to composer. I was going to say, I'm noticing a pattern here. Yeah, a little bit. He also did Johnny Dangerously, one of my all-time favorites from the 80s, and oh, Dirty Dancing. Charles, Charles, put that on the list. Johnny Dangerously? Hell yeah. yes. Yeah, we got to put that on the list, too. Another fantastic Peter Boyle movie, also. You Fargan ice hole summon a bitch. Oh, a you Fargan sneaky bastard. <laughs> yeah, we're going to put that on there. All right, it's on the list. Roman Maroney. Yeah. What is it? Roman Maroney? Yes. Deported to Russia, claims he's not from there. It's an 88 Magnum. It shoots through schools. It shoots through schools. It shouldn't kick me in the balls. Right. My, My mother sister did that kicked once. me in the balls once. Yeah. <laughs> once. <laughs> Do you know your last name is an adverb? <laughs> you can't park here. It's for the handicapped. I am handicapped. I'm psychotic. See, so many good lines. And we haven't we haven't even touched young Frankenstein yet, so uh, You guys, that <sighs> is an Amy he- that's an Amy Heckerling movie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Amy Heckerling, who I don't know, did Fast Times at Rismont High. Yeah. Maybe you've heard of her. So, maybe you've heard of it. Yeah. yeah. Where the hell are we? <laughs> so many good lines in that movie. That movie's so great. It is. Like I said, it's one of my favorites. Um, underrated. Cast. Hard and ice holes. <laughs> Cast, of course, in this one. Uh, Gene Wilder as Dr. Frederick Frankenstein. No, it isn't. It's Frederick Frankenstein. <laughs> so, notably, of course, he did Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I mean, if you need to know who Gene Wilder I know. is, I yeah. think you need to just push pause and re-examine your childhood. And then yes, <laughs> yeah. Because if you did, presumably you've never watched Willy Wonka, Blazing Saddles, or even Stir Crazy with Richard Pryor. Or fucking Silver Streak, which is one of yeah. my all-time favorites. Yeah. So, just an incredible yep. actor. An actor who, if, as far as I'm concerned, would have been great as the Doctor on Doctor Who. Oh if, yeah, he would have been. Because he's yeah. just he's just got that uh, presence. Yes, I think it would be yes, perfect for absolutely role. Absolutely does. Just one of those all time dream castings, like kind of like in a Tom Baker kind of way. He would have. Oh perfect, yeah, he would have been totally perfect for that. Peter, absolutely. Peter Boyle plays the monster. The monster, yes. Who we talked about not too long ago on Ghostwood when we discussed a little bit of um, Clyde Bruckman. Mm-hmm. When he because he was played Clyde Bruckman in the X Files episode Clyde Bruckman's Final Repose. Repose. I can't think of a more humiliating way yeah. to die than Art of Erotic Asphyxiation. And like Zan said, he's also in Johnny Dangerously. Mm-hmm. And one of my favorite little roles that he's in, Mo Shrevnitz in The Shadow. 
the, oh my God. the 1994 Alec Baldwin Before, version. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, but uh, but I liked him in that movie. That was good. Yep. Marty Feldman, of course, as Igor. Yes, Marty Feldman, who is... Have your eyes. Too late. Too late. Yeah. Marty Feldman is was an extremely, extremely, extremely talented comedic actor, and he passed away in two thousand in nineteen eighty two mm-hmm. from shellfish poisoning. I thought it was a heart attack, or was it caused by it, the heart attack it, caused by it, shellfish it, poisoning? I think it might have been that, but yeah, it was it was shellfish poisoning that brought on yeah everything. Yeah, and he was and he was filming Yellowbeard. Another, like, really obscure movie that I love from the 80s. But so he, they had to kind of, like, finish the movie without him. Yeah. Yeah, they, they had to bring they had to work around his, They had to work around his death. Yeah. Yeah, he was, in a, he was in a movie, one of those, Charles, I'm sure you remember this, but. Mm-hmm. Um, You're old enough back, you remember this. Yeah. No, I'm just saying, back, <laughs> you remember back in the day before we all had cable? You're right. The dark and days, the dark times before the empire. Just weird ass movies would come on like super late at night, mm-hmm. and you know, like you'd watch Saturday Night Live, and then at one a.m. in the morning, and some weird ass movie would come on. Or you, or in my case, you watch the Big Chuck and Little Little John show out of Cleveland. The Big Chuck and Little John show, yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah. We, so there were these weird movies that would come on real late at night. That some of them were fantastic. Like that's how I first saw the movie The Swarm. Again, right. an Irwin yeah. Allen movie yeah. about bees. Right. Well, there's a movie that I want to say Marty Feldman wrote this too, but he was in it also, um, where he plays. It's called In God We Trust. Mm-hmm. And he plays like a monk that like comes to the city to try and find money because the mon- the monastery is going bankrupt. So he meets, um. A hooker, who is Louise Lasser, Mary Hartman, Mary yeah, Hartman, right, and is being told by some televangelist who is Andy Kaufman about interesting how to cast find, in this one. How to find God? G O D. Who is played by Richard Pryor? I mean, this movie is so bizarre. Really, I've never heard of this movie. Yeah, yeah, it's a really, really. It's one of those movies where like you grow up knowing you saw it, and then you're like did I actually watch that? Like, <laughs> like no one else has ever seen it. You know, you're the yeah. only one that is like, you remember that movie where Marty Feldman is a monk and everybody's like, what the hell are you talking about? Did you dream that movie? Yeah. Yeah. But it was, a, it's a completely, one of my favorite scenes in it is he's talking about, he's talking to Louise Lasser and they're in a diner and he's talking about being a monk and how the Bible tells you not to do all of these things, but then doesn't tell you what those things actually are. And he's like, you know, it's like the Bible says, do not fornicate, but it doesn't tell you what fornicating is. Like, I could be sitting here right now fornicating and have no idea that I'm doing it. <laughs> so I always thought that was that pretty is, that is funny. funny. Yeah, Marty Feldman yeah. left this mortal coil way too soon. Yeah, he was also in another Mel Brooks film, Silent Movie. So and, I love And uh, did a pretty notable episode of The Muppet Show back in the day. Do you know who has the only speaking role in Mel Brooks' Silent Movie? Who? Marcel Marceau. That's funny. That's funny. Because Marcel Marceau, for those who don't know, is a professional mime. So that's what makes it funny. He's the only person that has a speaking line. In the that's funny. Movie. I know, right? Mm-hmm. No, you're a genius. I, no, um, we genius. talked about Cloris Leachman as Frau Blucher. Mm-hmm. Yep. Terry Garr plays Inga. And yes. who I think is very underrated in this movie. She's really good in it. Terry Gar is underrated in general. She's yeah. she's wonderful. She can do anything. She's gorgeous. Yeah. She's fantastic. I first got to know her because she played Roberta Lincoln on the classic Star Trek episode Assignment Earth. Yes, that's right. I yeah. think my first exposure to Terry Gar was probably Mr. Mom. Okay. That was I did see that movie. Yeah, I was gonna mention that. She was also in Close Encounters of the Third Kind. She was in Close Encounters, and as a as an animation fan, I'm a. I remember her from playing Mary McGinnis, Terry McGinnis's mom on Batman Beyond back in the day. Oh yeah, that's right. Yep, so that's. And her. for all of you out there like me who were in college in the '90s and you're right. fans of the TV show Friends, mm-hmm. 
she plays Phoebe's mother. That makes it perfect. Okay. That's perfect casting right there. Yeah, her mother is Terry Gar and her father is Bob Balaban. That's funny. That's good. Yeah. 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 Uh, Kenneth Mars, we talked about a little bit, plays Inspector Hans Wilhelm Friedrich Kemp. Hey, Charles. Yeah. Have you ever seen the movie What's Up, Doc? No, I haven't. Okay. If you've never, I mean, that's, you know, if you haven't seen it, it's a bad candidate for doing cinema, but it's. Okay. One, it's a hell. I mean, I could, movie. I could track it down if you want. Now, hear me out. Okay. Hear me out. I know it's not like me to recommend a Ryan O'Neill movie. Yeah. <laughs> It's a I comedy. It's, I didn't know you had a thing against Ryan O'Neill, but that's okay. Well, you know that you know that Simpsons quote where they go to the video store as a family and they go to rent a movie, so they rent the movie Love Story. Mm-hmm. And they're all watching it, and Homer and Marge are kind of getting into it, but the kids don't like it. And Lisa says, "I hate this movie. She's wooden and unpleasant, and no matter what he does, he's still Ryan O'Neill." <laughs> Which <laughs> is totally how I feel about Ryan O'Neill. Right. Like no matter how good he can be in a movie, he's still Ryan O'Neill, and he's right, still exactly. Like, and total ass hat. Yeah. Um, but it's a comedy. It's a romantic comedy with Ryan O'Neill and Barbara Streisand. Mm-hmm. Now, I know that's a hard sell for a lot of people. That is a really hard sell. Yes. Really hard sell. Okay. But here's the thing about Barbara Streisand. Say what you want to about her as a singer. Tell me all about how you're sick of listening to her because you grew up with your mom playing her records all the time. Mm-hmm. When it comes to comedies, she is second to none. Okay. She is fantastic comedic actress okay yeah um and yeah what's up doc is one of the greatest movies ever and okay. anyway kenneth mars is in that that's my other that's my other favorite kenneth mars movie okay those are good recommendations he was also in yellow beard interestingly enough yep. and he was in the producers another mel brooks film and he's also in fletch with chevy chase that is my major i have two well, technically, I have three. Mm-hmm. Uh, three major 1980s failings as a moviegoer. Not seen Fletch? Never seen Fletch. Okay. Well, the, at least there's a movie that I've seen that you haven't seen for once. Yes. I've never seen Top Gun, but I refuse to see Top Gun. Yeah, you have a Tom Cruise thing. Yeah. See, you know, it's one of those things where it's like I'm 44 and I've still never seen it, so I would right. like that to be on my epitaph. Or any of the know. Mission Possible movies. Oh yeah, I've seen I've seen a total of three Tom Cruise movies in my entire life, and I'm working let me, on it. Let me on guess, a, Legend. No. No, I thought you would have been all over Legend. Nope. Hmm. Interesting. Interview with a Vampire. Okay, there's four. I forgot about <laughs> it. You forgot about that one. Yeah, I forgot about that one. Yeah. Okay. So, yes, Interview with a Vampire. Okay. Um, A Few Good Men. No. Hmm. That's a great movie. Let's see. Um, Risky Business. Nope. Okay. I've seen that one, too. Um, God, what else? Oh, yeah. When you were in junior high, there's a movie about a hot blonde hooker. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Uh, you saw that, Charles. Yeah. yeah. Okay, (laughs) great. All right. (laughs) I had an ex-boyfriend one time talking to me about some... Shitty movie he yeah. saw. And Rebecca I De Mornay, said, yes, in Risky why did you Business. Bother watching... it's good. I said, why did you bother watching that movie? And he said, because he said because I was 12 and there were tits in it. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, I cannot argue with you about that. <laughs> That's why, you know, like, why you watch uh, Risky Business for Rebecca De Mornay and Fast Times at Richmond High for Phoebe Cates. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, I confess. Yes. Yeah, we all know. Oh, okay, all, all right, all right, I'll own it. Um, do you want me to tell you? Yeah, Charles? please. Yeah, please do. This might be faster. Yeah. Okay. Um, Rain Man. The that. Outsiders. The Outsiders. Yeah, Lori loves the Outsiders. And you, you know that my favorite director after David Lynch is Stanley Kubrick. Right. So, so uh, Eyes Wide okay. Shut. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Interesting. So, but I would like to see, Chris really wants me to see Magnolia, and so I'll probably wind up with Magnolia. Okay. But, yeah, I just, uh, but yeah, I've never seen Fletch, never seen Top Gun, and I've never seen Lethal Weapon. Interesting. Yeah, you know, right? Well, obviously, nowadays, it's like, I wouldn't want to watch Lethal Weapon. (laughs) 
It's hard enough for me to watch like the Road Warrior. Oh. Even though I love the Road Warrior. I own. Yeah. <laughs> what what is it? What is it? Uh, what is the name of the? Oh man! Oh, I can't think of it. The um. Bar- I own Barter Town Sugar Tits. Yes, there you go. <laughs> yeah. All right, I, gotta, I could not right. think of the name of it. I was like, what the hell's wrong with me? All right, I got a couple more cast members, and then we can get started. Yes, we do. So, uh, Madeline Kahn plays Elizabeth. Madeline Kahn. Who is Oh, my God, fantastic. I love her. Uh, Madeline one of, Kahn. One of my favorites is Lily about. von Stupp in Blazing Saddles. Lily von Stupp, yes. She's fantastic in that movie. Let's check. Okay, let me let me look at this here. Madeline Kahn, also in the Muppet movie. Right. Yes. So, yep. Uh, and Empress Empress Nympho in History of the World Part One, which I just love the name Empress Nympho. And Mrs. White and Clue. Mrs. White and Clue, Gypsy in a Bug's Life. She did the voice for that. Yes, she did. So, uh, just lots of great things. Obviously, you know, she's got a, a pretty wonderful career as well before she passed. Yes, she did. Gene Hackman plays Harold the Blind Man, and yep. obviously Gene Hackman. Big for Zan and I because he played Lex Luthor, King of Australia. The greatest criminal mind of our time. Exactly. In Superman's 1, 2, and 4, The Quest for Peace. Mm -hmm. And he also played, notably, Jimmy Popeye Doyle in The French Connection. Yeah, Popeye Doyle. Which I enjoyed that movie. And Unforgiven. He's in the Clint Eastwood movie, Unforgiven, which is... I think that got him an Academy Award nomination, if I'm not mistaken. I think it did. He also Because he's really good in that as the bad guy in that movie. Gene Hackman is... Gene Hackman is in the top five greatest American actors in the history of acting. Yeah. Um, I personally would put him above Spencer Tracy. I would, too. Because I feel like he can do comedy better than Spencer Tracy can. Yeah. As, a, you know, Tracy, as Lex Luthor proved. You know, right. Spencer Tracy is more of a straight man when he does comedy, whereas Gene Hackman can deliver the comedy a little better. So, Or like in this I movie, can, too, I should say. Yeah. yeah, I consider Gene Hackman to be He's got more greatest, range. Yeah, I think he's the greatest American actor in, that has been in film. Yeah. I just looked it up. I think he's like 94 now. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's He's getting up there, but and he writes spy novels now. That's excellent. So, yeah, but... Uh, um, yeah, Gene Hackman for me is the greatest American actor in in film, and I think after him I would have to pick either Spencer Tracy or Robert De Niro. And Robert De Niro because I feel like he doesn't have any ego at all. He will take a smaller part in a movie because he likes the part. Right. Like he doesn't have to be the star of a movie, and I think that is a mark of a fantastic actor. Like, for example, um, he's in Terry Gilliam's Brazil. Okay. And he's not who you think of. Right. Um, he's definitely not, I mean, he's not in the main cast at all. He's not in it very much. His face is covered through most of it. But that's okay. He doesn't have to be the star of the movie. He's in Angel Heart. Yeah, a, you know, I wouldn't call him a bit part in Angel Heart, but I would call it not a lot of screen time. Right. But doesn't matter doesn't matter. He's he'll do anything that's good. So. All right. So shall we get started with our our um, commentary? Let's get. All right. You know, we everybody's kind of like heard our prologue before. You know, enough. Right. Yes. So exactly. uh, so if you want to watch Young Frankenstein. With us, we definitely encourage that you do. And you do. You do. We are currently queued up at the 2 minute 50 second mark, right at the spot where it says Director of Photography, Gerald Hirschfeld, ASC. And before we get started, Charles, let's, yes. let's, divulge, let's divulge our beverages. Yes. So what are you drinking tonight? Because tonight. I'm, just, I'm just drinking a Heineken because Paps Blue Room and they were all out, so... So basically, you just opened yeah. me up to be able to say Heineken. <laughs> fuck that shit. Thank Pabst you. Blue Ribbon. <laughs> That's why I did that. Yes. 
gonna are you gonna not hear me honking the horn later because you have to pee <laughs> <laughs> nice all right anyway i am drinking i just had total uh, flashbacks of our blue velvet discussion on uh ghost Witch. i'm drinking untitled arts latest latest opus which is peaches sour a la mode yeah it's like a creamy sour peach beer and you said it was really good it is it is delicious yes and once again our disclaimer yes that charles and i are not minors we are definitely of age and then some and we are drinking these adult beverages mentally uh, it's you know it's judgment mentally call. it's it's borderline yeah we're drinking these adult beverages in our own homes we are not driving we are not we are definitely socially distancing and our spouses are here so in case we do anything stupid like fall over the back of a chair while we're looking for an autographed paperback someone um, can take us to the hospital I don't know. Or no. who was that i forget i don't know i think it was you charles <laughs> <laughs> that's funny because i have a recording that says different but yeah well recordings can be altered <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's... so should we get a put in one of those disclaimer labels with that that the the uh, digital media may have been altered, that kind of thing. Content. <laughs> Alter content. She's really not this much of a hapless idiot. Yeah. So, She's but, really a very charming person in real life. <laughs> yes. But thankfully, Zan is sitting down at the moment. So, uh, yes, I'm sitting There's down. little chance of that happening a second time. Well, Zan's going to get more beer pretty soon. But, oh, you know, okay. That's not, it's not, the beer is not behind the chair. Yeah. So. so at the moment, it's not very risky. Let's just put it No, there. it's not. There's, yeah, there's not a lot of risk of that. Minimal, minimal risk. So, uh, so, minimal, yeah. So, you know, we're not in any OSHA violations at the moment, but, nope. you know, fingers yeah. crossed, right? All right. Yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll Maybe what we'll happens. eat some raw chicken when we're drunk. I don't know. <laughs> This could be uh, audio history here, so stay tuned. I know, right? <laughs> All right. So, like I said, we're at the two fifty mark. Director of photography Gerald Hirschfeld, and uh, we get a nice little still shot of the castle right before we're going to cut to live action. So, all righty. All right. So, if everybody's ready, got your DVDs queued up at home or Blu-rays or what have you, we will press play in three, two, one. Doink. Doink. There we go. See, was that so, a great spot or what? To, to it's a up. good spot. So now we're now we're in the little rainy uh, alcove here. And I will say that this they did a good job with this castle because it is very reminiscent of Brand Castle in Romania. Right. And when I went to <laughs> when I went to Brand Castle in Romania, there was a girl on the tour with me who was a fan of this movie also. And she made like a knockers joke, and then oh. there was a the the, the Brand Castle was it, it just happens to be what they have decided is Dracula's castle, you know, because Dracula was never actually there. It's a military outpost. It's not anything anyone. So because that's why it's on a on a the side of a mountain is because it's a military outpost lookout. Right. And so it has all of these really really dangerous steps. Right in it because it's just the staircase out of will be dead. Can be treacherous. treacherous. Yes, yes, I said that like seven times <laughs> <laughs> when I was going up the stairs there. Because there's one where it's you know there's did you carry up candles that, that weren't lit? Did, did you carry up candles that weren't lit? Oh, look at very carefully. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Put the so, candle back. Back. <laughs> Put the kernel back and then. All right. All right. So here we are, opening shot where we're going to do a little. And this is really nice direction here by Mel. Yeah. Um, just that kind of pan over above the coffin as we see Baron von Frankenstein. The Baron. He was, was my fun. boyfriend. Yes. <laughs> ah! So he's uh, not looking a little good there. He looks like he's put, lost a little weight. So I was watching a couple of the deleted scenes before we started doing this, Charles. Yep. This is and funny. The reason. Shunk. <laughs> Don't be so grabby. Don't be so grabby. The, the reason this is going on is because 
the deal was his will was to be read on his 100th birthday. Right. So, and they read the will and. So essentially this is like the executor taking the will to, right. to uh, Frederick. Right. Frederick. Frederick. Yes. <laughs> we might as well call him by the butcher name. Yeah. Yeah. This is an actor named uh, Richard Hyden, who was in an episode of the Twilight Zone called A Thing About Machines, where he hates machines, so of course the machines turn on him. Of course. Yes, that's how that works. So here's Froderick giving a lecture. Yes. And um, talking about the... Looking, and we're not sure if he's drawing the, oblongata. the vein of Galen. And so at that point, I just thought, that's it, let's get out. Right. He's got two brain surgeon movies in a row, yeah. Charles. How did we do that? Uh, that's a good how question. We, that's a good question. We, that's ah, Frankenstein. Yes. It's, oh, everybody. hey, it's Brainy Smurf, everybody. Here's the great Danny Goldman, Brainy Smurf from the Smurfs. But Papa Smurf says... Yes! Yes, we all know what he says. <laughs> so. We all know what he did. We all know what he did. I think that's one of my most quoted lines from this movie. I don't you, know. If you I, love that quote, yes. I love that quote. I think it's great. This is, this is a great quote. I don't. I have no problem with it. Famous cuckoo. Cuckoo. Yeah. Big laughs. Big laughs. And we have uh, in the front row there. We have uh, Richard Sakai from The Simpsons. Not oh, Richie Sakai, Sakai, really? It looks. I mean, it looks like him. Yeah, yeah it does. Right. So here we have a volunteer. Give him an extra dollar. <laughs> yeah, give him an extra. That's one of my favorite quotes. I love that quote. Yeah, that's a good one. Who is apparently the frailest guy in the world? I know he kind of looks like he's already dead. <laughs> So, so uh, why don't you just hop up there? Yeah. <laughs> nice hopping. Yeah, nice hopping. Yeah. Of the Columbus Hilltops? Yeah, I don't... Uh... Yeah, I don't think so. He had to think for a moment about which knee he was going to raise, by the way. I know. I think that's great. So essentially, he is talking about you know motor impulses and voluntary muscular control. And trying to distinguish between involuntary mo mo movements. Yeah. Hmm, excuse me. You filthy, rotten, <laughs> yellow son of a bitch. A bitch. <laughs> Slightly racist there. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it just looks at him like he's like what the. <laughs> yeah, I think we might be a little out of sync, Charles. Okay, am I too fast? I think you're a little too fast. So okay, let me let me see if I can go back ten seconds. No, I don't think you're that fast. Right. Just let's see what's let's okay. see what's going to happen here. For five or six seconds. Another grabbing bastard! As you can see, all communication is shut off. Yeah, you did it. I okay. think we're good. All right. Right of her mechanical magnificence. We're not for this continuous stream of motor impulses. We would collapse like a bunch of like a bunch. broccoli. Uh, give him an extra dollar. <laughs> Poor old man just got meat in the nuts in front of like a hundred kids. A whole dollar. Yay. A whole dollar, huh? Wow. Yep. He should be happy he's not being purchased by right. Burke and Hare. <laughs> or on earth to regenerate life back into it. Or is there? Yep. Uh, Dr. F Dr. Funk uh, Fra Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Isn't it true yeah, that exactly. Darwin preserved a piece of vermicelli in a glass case until by some extraordinary means it actually began to move with a voluntary motion? 
Are you speaking of the worm or the spaghetti? spaghetti. I love how he says it. Yeah. Spaghetti. Yeah. That's one of the best things about Gene Wilder is his enunciation. Yeah, he's got fantastic. And it's his comedic timing is spectacular. It is spectacular. You know, the you know the only problem with Gene Wilder is what? I can see that there's padding in his pants for when he's going to stab himself here in a minute. Ah, uh, it's well, totally you know. obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you the least bit curious about it? Brainy, shut up! Yeah, okay? shut, shut up, Brainy. Ravings of a lunatic mind. Dead is dead. Can these are Tinker, Tinker Toys? What I love about Gene is when he does his little shouty parts. Does it? He's I mean, got a he great shouts, shouting voice. Yeah. Yeah. My grandfather's My work was doo doo. Watch the scalpel, everybody. But look at his leg. It's so obviously yeah. there's padding. Stab. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, well, you didn't think he was going to stab his own leg, did you? No, of course not, but he should probably have... Uh, this is a... Uh, dismissed. Dismissed. <laughs> I just love how he, like, lets go of it and yeah. then holds it again. <laughs> now, you notice there wasn't any blood spurting out when he pulls it out. No, there's not. Because he did That's it in the past. Frankenstein. Um, Brainy Smith. Uh, Brainy Smith. Brainy, Brainy Smith. Smith. Yeah, uh, Brady Brady Smurf passed away last year. It was, uh, yeah, was, they, he, he was in, like there were like two hundred and twenty seven episodes of the Smurfs too. So he uh, he got well paid. Yeah, he did a good one. Excuse me, Papa Smurf. Shut up, Brady. <laughs> Goddamn mouth. Oh. None of the lips. None of the lips. <laughs> During that party. <laughs> yeah, she she doesn't yes. want him to mess up her makeup or her hair. Yeah, exactly. So he's trying <laughs> to be affectionate and just like it's not happening. Yeah. I uh, I was thinking about this. Yeah. Today. I'm wondering what um how how bad of a dive lipstick sales have taken. Cause oh, you, you oh because of, yeah. What's the point of lipstick right now? Right, because you're wearing a mask. So, yeah. Exactly. The hair. I prefer old-fashioned wedding nights. (laughs) Hey, now. (laughs) (laughs) The hair. It wouldn't surprise me if that was (laughs) ad-libbed. Taffeta, darling. Oh, yes, taffeta. Sweetheart. (laughs) You know, the dress is taffeta. It wrinkles so easily. <laughs> that horrid man. She is so good at playing this type of character. Nails. Sorry. Malincon is just... So this is love in the age of COVID. Yeah, exactly. Don't don't actually touch elbows. me. Elbows. Yep, they do their elbows. See? If they could do it in 1974, you could do it now. You can do it now. Exactly. He blows her a kiss and she ducks. Khan is so just. <laughs> She's just duck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Coughing on the train now. What I get, what, what I love about her is what I loved about Madeline Khan was that you know she's this very attractive woman, but she's mm-hmm. not afraid to be funny. No, Madeline Khan also in What's Up Doc. Yeah. Very early version of her in What's Up Doc. Um, okay, I I think this is a hilarious gag. Yes. <laughs> um, first of all, there's different people on the train. He's taking a train to right. Transylvania right. from New York. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how does that work, right? <laughs> Doesn't exactly work. Yeah. I think that's a hilarious joke. Transylvania next to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Track 29. 
Can I give you a shine? Can I give you a shine? That old joke. Uh, no thanks. Yeah, that's the one thing I will say for Mel Brooks. He's never afraid to dust off an old chestnut. <laughs> no, he he goes way, way back. Probably the yeah. stuff that made him laugh as a kid. As a child, yeah, yeah exactly. So these are like really obscure. These were obscure jokes even for 1974. Seriously. Yeah, these were. Yeah, these were dad jokes in 1974. Dr. Frankenstein. Dr. Frankenstein. And it's the great Marty Feldman. Yes. (laughs) You're putting me on. (laughs) No, it's pronounced Frankenstein. Also say Froderick. Well, why isn't it Frederick Frederick Frankenstein? Frankenstein. Yeah. Because it isn't. It's Frederick Frankenstein. I see. No, it's pronounced Igor. Yeah. It's Igor. They put it either. Well, they were wrong then, weren't they? I love that little smirk. That right. Little, like, yeah. That little, like, frown he does. I think that's so adorable. It's that kind of, like, F you is like, well, you're going to, like, mispronounce your name? Well, then fine. I'll mispronounce my name. Yeah. And he's like, well, they were wrong then, weren't they? And he just gives him that little yep. like, Ooh. Sorry. I'm yeah, a... everybody's. I don't mean to embarrass you, but. Uh... I'm rather a brilliant surgeon. I have a jet car and everything. Oh, wait, that's a different guy. Oh, that's a different, yeah. We're getting our brain surgeons mixed up. <laughs> Abby something. Abby, Abby, are you telling, or are you, we're getting ahead of ourselves? Yeah, we're getting I'm ahead. Gonna, yeah, we're getting ahead. I, I'm not going to get so drunk that I quote the movie before it happens. Right. It's the time you walk it. this way. Now, here's an interesting bit of trivia for those who don't know. Um, that quote where, where Igor says, walk this way. Mm-hmm. was actually, it actually inspired the 1975 song Walk This Way by Aerosmith. <laughs> yep. Deciding, apparently they were deciding to take a break from recording, so the band members and this producer named Jack Douglas went down to Times Square to see Mel Brooks's Young Frankenstein. And they got, on the way back to the studio, they were laughing. And uh, Marty Feldman, you know, talking about the Walk This Way, and then the producer suggested they use this as the title for their song. Oh, I like that. Hello, Inga. It's like I have a hole in the hay. It's fun. Roll, roll, roll in the hay. Again, another old joke. Yep. Roll in the hay, for those of you who don't yes, know. It means it's sex. Cute. Yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. euphemism. Yeah. Um... And can we just talk about how great it was that Mel Brooks decided to shoot this movie in black and white, just like the original, like, Frankenstein movies? The, the James Whale Frankenstein? Yeah, the James yeah. Whale Frankenstein. That's, an, that's another actress who I think was absolutely wonderful and complete, very gorgeous, was Elsa yeah. Lancaster. Oh, yeah, yeah, the bride. Bride of Frankenstein. Yeah. Yeah, I think Elsa was gorgeous. Yep. And Madeline Kahn does a nice wonderful trip there, to her. Wolf. There, Wolf. There, Castle. There, Castle. Why are you talking right, that way? So, okay. I thought you wanted to. No, I don't want no, to. I don't want to. Speak yourself. I'm All right, do you know? Do you guys know the YouTube video with a dramatic chipmunk that looks to yes. be like a dun, dun, camera? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's where this, this from. This is where that music comes from. Yep. Yep. Blah, blah, blah. So. From the brilliant mind of John Morris. Oh. <laughs> Here's I I uh, when I Here's was a kid I thought what knockers thought the, the walk this way doom joke was doom um the pinnacle of comedy doom. I used to do that all the time when I would yeah. go downstairs I would walk this way <laughs> what what knockers thank you doctor. Oh. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> yeah. Knockers, for those of you who don't know, are boobies. Right. I think that's pretty obvious from the scene, but yeah. That's pretty obvious from the direction. Yeah. yeah. There she is. Cloris Leachman, everybody. Oh, here she is. I am Frau Blucher. Blucher. <laughs> <laughs> 
and that's a running gag. Yes. The whole bit where the horse is whinny every time that she mentions the word. Somebody, somebody mentions the word blue hair. <laughs> Your rooms have been prepared, Herr Doctor. I've always tried to figure out exactly what yeah. time period was supposed to be taking place. Right. And Cloris Leachman, she was really good at playing older women, even when she was young at this point. Right, right. Yeah, Cloris Leachman. She just had that kind of face, I guess. Yep. And here's one yep. of my favorite parts. Look at Luca. Yeah. And he's all pleased with himself. <laughs> Look at this grin he gets. So That's one of, the, it's one of the funny things is like, Igor is the character in this movie that actually breaks the fourth wall to the audience. Oh, he does. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah he's, I mean, he's, let's be honest, I mean, he's kind of the yeah. best one. <laughs> now, normally that would have been Mel Brooks, but um, apparently Gene Wilder said the only reason he would uh, do star Young Frankenstein is if Mel Brooks wasn't in it. Yes, yes. Because he didn't want yeah, Mel he, Brooks, he said he didn't want Mel breaking the fourth wall all the time. So Marty Feldman ends up doing it anyway. Here's the thing, though. I think that... Oh, stay close to the candles. The staircase can be treacherous. Can be treacherous. And they're not lit. The candles aren't lit. That's the gag. I know. I love that the candles are not lit. I think that's ridiculous. These so, are great um, subtle gags. Yeah. I, okay, here's what I want to know. Who has that painting? Um, I wonder, I wonder if Gene Wilder had it and now his wife has it, or if it's Mel a good Brooks question. What happened to that? Yeah, Mel probably has it. There's the Bergen Medical Library. <laughs> I wonder if Mel kept it. This is all very general. A doctor, any doctor would have them in his study. I Dr. looked at one, one whole book. Frankenstein. <laughs> Slightly awkward here. Slightly out the bit. Good night. Yeah. Would the cat, doctor care for a brandy before retiring? No. Thank you. Some warm <laughs> milk? Warm <laughs> milk. Perhaps. No. Thank you very much. Sure. No thanks. Ovaltine. Ovaltine. Be Nothing. sure... Be sure to drink your Ovaltine. Son of a bitch. <laughs> a commercial? A lousy commercial? <laughs> good night. Then I will say good night. I don't think I've ever had Ovaltine. I have never had Ovaltine. Yeah. It's, I mean, if there was such a... I mean, why would I drink now Ovaltine? look at the shaving mirror. Yep. <laughs> Lay a little smoochie on Victor. A little smoochie on Victor! Victor. So. Good night. It's like, bitch, leave. Oh. I want to go to bed. Yeah, if you can buy, if you can buy Nest Quick, why would you buy Oval Pink? That's a good question. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking here. Destiny! 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 Yeah, I always, I always find these, these, uh, you know, gigantic, these movies in gigantic castles kind of yeah. bizarre. Like they have like 115 rooms yeah. and they all are fully furnished with, with, you know, oak or ebony bed sets. They're also. Right. Ornate. I think it's wonderful. But like, uh, like the Elephant Man, this movie's shot beautifully for black and white. Oh yeah, absolutely. Looks great. I'll say it. I'll say it. Destiny. 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 No Destiny. escaping that for me. Destiny. Destiny. Me. No escaping that for me. Um, I wonder who did that painting. I've never been able to. I wonder if there's a there's there's got to be a book on the making of that. I'm sure there is. It's yeah. out there somewhere. You are having a Nachtmare, which is Nachtmare. Nacht, Nacht is German for night. So there you yes. go. So that's that's what I'm. That's what I wonder. One of the fewer words I remember from my German class. There is a, there is a lot of like Austro-Hungarian 
Right. Mm-hmm. Crossover. Yeah, in cause... Romania. Yeah. Yeah. Because Romania, the way it is now, right, has only been a country for like a hundred years. It's not. It's not a very old country. Um, but uh, the region in Transylvania is not a town. It's a region. Right. So. Yes, you are definitely our Romanian expert since you've been there. Yes, I have been. It's actually quite a quite a beautiful place. There's, you, you know, it's like Hand me that me. candle, will you? Why Put don't they do this the candle back? Put the candle back. Why don't they build houses with secret passages and more shows? Maybe they do, and it's secret. Yeah, well, where is the secret passageway in my house? Well, you have to apparently pull the right candle. See, all my candles are in tins that I bought at Aldi. So <laughs> that's probably my problem. Yeah, probably. It's, I think, be- I think, uh, it's probably behind your CD case, your CD shelves. <laughs> my, my copious, copious amount of CD shelves. Which I'm looking at right now. You're looking at this. I'm going to start a paper route right now. <laughs> Shove against the other side of the bookcase. Is it perfectly clear? I love that he's kind of talking like Mickey Mouse in the scene. Yeah, I think that's hilarious. Yeah. So, so now this is the yeah. part of the movie where Van's been drinking too much on an empty stomach. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where things get fun, kids. Strap yourselves in. We're going for a ride. Uh, hold on, lady. We're going for a ride. <laughs> so I'm going to pretend like it's 1988 and I'm at the mall and uh, there's a hot Sam. <laughs> oh, I've missed that store so damn much. Oh, my God. Hot Sam. <laughs> One of my, my all-time favorite pretzel store. I mean, I love Auntie Annie's, but. Yeah, Auntie Annie's is. Yeah, Auntie Annie's are good, but hot Sam's yeah. were the bomb, yo. I feel like Auntie Annie's is not really pretzels. They're more like yeah, oh, they're more like just buttery goodness. You yeah. know, they're more butter than they yeah. are pretzel. Right, they are. But Hot Sam was like oh, that was heaven, it's especially so <laughs> especially when they were like so hot and fresh right out of the oven. Yeah, and they, they were they, like your traditional hot pretzel, like that you would get like at. Any snack bar, like in that little cage where they all hang from there. (laughs) Just a rat. Uh, Oh, rats. Oh, rats. Rats. Millions of them. Rats. Come on, rats. I love that he grabs the the door handle here and it just breaks apart. (laughs) (laughs) There are so many little sight gags in this movie. Yeah. It's so adorable. And like I said, that's, that's what makes for some of the greatest comedies in the history of film. Mm-hmm. So There's just these dumb little things. And, like, and you have to be some, probably somebody that appreciates sight gags. You have to appreciate sight gags, and you have to appreciate that. Yep. Oh, and speaking of, of, speaking of which, here's a classic right here. Two years dead. One, six months dead. I know you love this one, Charles. I love this scene right here. I know you do. Ah, I ain't got nobody. nobody. And nobody cares for me. (laughs) I go a Frodrick. You just have to be hanging out there. It's great. I know. I love it. (laughs) It's just genius. Yeah, this movie is. Call it a hunch. Marty Feldman, man. He's, he's doing all this right here. Yep. It might be dangerous. You go first. Egyptian ass. <laughs> Very dangerous. You Very go dangerous. first. You go first. So, Why par- have so apparently Sala and Igor are related. They're related, yeah. Well, they're both really good sidekicks. That's true. This is true. Kind of wonder if maybe Spielberg and Lucas nicked that from Young Frankenstein. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised either. 
You mean George Lucas copied somebody? I know, right? Dab your eyes. Too late. Too late. So, um, and here's where, over- where we get a big homage to the original 1931 Frankenstein. Yes. And if I recall correctly, didn't Mel get the actual lab equipment from that movie? I, yeah, he did. He got some of the actual original stuff. Yeah. Um, all the machines and whatnot. They don't put yeah. all spark itch. Yeah, and, you know, Igor turning on the uh, light switch right. and getting electrocuted. Also, for, like, five-year-old me. Yeah. Again, like the pinnacle of comedy. <laughs> mm-hmm. What a filthy mess. I don't know. A little paint, a few flowers, a couple of throw pillows. <laughs> throw pillows? And then he nuzzles up to his shoulder. That's hilarious. Like a cat. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's so great. The, he he, the only real crime with this movie yeah. is that we don't get more scenes with Marty Feldman and Madeline right. Kahn. <laughs> well, the thing is, you know, like, Marty Feldman steals every scene he's in in this movie. He steals every scene he's in. He's so good. <laughs> you can't help but watch him because he's always oh, yeah. doing, like, he doesn't just stand there. Like, like right now he's, like, crouching and it looks like you don't know what he's going to be doing next. Yeah. So it's you just it, no it's, it's just this great comedy team right here with um, Gene Wilder playing the straight man. Who's right. obviously a little unhinged because he's a mad scientist. And then you've got um, Inga, you know, uh, Terry Gar's character, kind of being the mm-hmm. ingenue. Mm-hmm. And then Marty Feldman just being this oddball, um, unpredictable character. It's just a great right. trio, comedy trio. It's, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. The dynamic is fabulous. But I, I love how Marty it's Feldman. Still warm. Mad- and how Madeline Kahn play off each other. Yeah. The chemistry is just fabulous. Yeah. They're so good. <laughs> this is my grandfather's private library. I, I can feel, feel it. it. And then they all look. <laughs> look one direction. How I did it by O.J. Simpson. How I did it. Victor Frankenstein. By O.J. Simpson. Oh, man. That's just. How do you even think that that's even remotely a good idea? I know, right? <laughs> like. When you're being sued in a civil suit, for, yes. and when people think you killed your—I mean, the whole world thinks you killed your wife—and you just egg it on, that's just—that's just. Yeah, just. Oh, at best, it's just not reading the room. <laughs> no, it's just you know too much trolling, I guess. Natural trolling. Yeah, exactly. Became capable of bestowing animation upon lifeless matter. It can be done. It could work. Work. Dun, dun. And then notice the painting has changed to him smiling. I know. He's smiling now. So there's two paintings out there. Again, my question stands. Who has them? Right. It's a good question. Yeah. Probably some collector somewhere. Got a hold of them. Yeah, somebody. I should ask my friend Dave. He, he, he's a uh, big in uh, movie collectibles. He might know. So here they're talking to the stature of the creature. He would have had an enormous schwanstickle. <laughs> yep. Goes without saying. He's going to be very popular. Yeah. <laughs> that's one of my favorite lines, too. Yeah, that's a good one. He would have an enormous schwanstucker. Because of that thing. Because of that thing. Yeah. Woof. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be very popular. I like this scene, too, where they... Yeah. Yeah, for some reason, he has a writing crop cut. here. I don't know why, but... <laughs> Why does he have a writing prop? To do to, to do that flourish Just, when he turns around. Yeah. Something like this. Yeah, I love this bit where 
he hangs it from the yes. andirons, and then we cut to yeah, the graveyard. Peter Boyle hanging from the gallows. Yeah, crude, yes, primitive, yes, perhaps even grotesque. This might be our man. Do, 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 um, do, do. So, Charles, I'm now drinking. Um, I drank this a couple of times. Nice too. dissolve. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. I love that dissolve. Yes. I'm now doing a untitled art. Picking that was my MST3K nod, by the way. Nice. Good one. Thank Good you. one. This is Pixie Mix, which is uh, essentially great alcoholic great Kool Aid. Whack. And it's delicious. Mm, that sounds good. Yeah, it's very, very good. You have to make some of that whenever we can actually hang out. Well, it's limited edition, so mm. maybe I will. Uh, well, maybe I'll be nice and save you one. That's all right. It's a great pixie mix. That's nice. So, I would be all so over that. I would be all over that in a heartbeat. You want to know what I learned at Hot Sam that I never knew or never would have expected? <laughs> no, what? You know, it's delicious on a hot pretzel. What? Cream cheese. Mm. It's kind of like a bagel. I used, yeah, I used to go to Hot Sam and I would get pretzel bites with cream cheese dipping sauce. Or cream cheese for dipping. It's not really a dip. How do I spill a beer without even drinking it? Because drunk cinema. It's what we do. I'm not drinking it fast enough, that's why. There you go. See, your problem was letting the gravity take effect. It could be worse. Ow. It could be raining. That look. Uh, that's a great gag. That's one that Chris and yes. I quote all the time. Yeah, that's a great one. All right, I am losing my power. So. Wipe. Screen wipe. By George Lucas. Screen wipe. There's more wipes than star wipes. I'm taking my name off this thing. <laughs> I like how they're trying to smuggle this body right through the center of town. I know, right? On a stone street, a cobblestone street. Can't and as then, far as it. <laughs> just then they drop it. Yeah. And their arms sticking out. They count yeah. arms. It's like, wait a minute. Yeah, I love this. <laughs> and then guard shows up with some obviously very fake buildings. Yep. Back lot buildings. Yep. So he covers it up by trying to pretend that his hand is poking through his cloak. Mm -hmm. It's his hand. It's picking the nail. Yep. <laughs> Regardless of the fact that it's like double in size compared to his. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> nice to meet you, Constable. Why, you're chilled to the bone, sir. <laughs> Little nip from the old bottle wouldn't be too bad, would it, sir? That's the ticket. Certainly on this podcast. Seriously. It's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like you're right, Charles. It's, you gotta like sight gags to like this one. Exactly. I love sight gags, so it's good. Of course, I grew yes, up on Looney, Looney Tunes, so yes. Mm-hmm. Here, here's some uh, foot fetish porn for Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> oh, boy. I lost you there for a second. Are you still there? I'm still here. Can you hear you me now? Up on me. I can hear you now, but you were, you were like frozen in time there for a second. It's, yeah, it happens. Yes, and here we see that, that to, Igor's hump is moving sides. Yes. So he's all, smi see, he smiles to the camera. He knows that we're watching him. <laughs> so like we're in, we're, we're in on his joke with Frederick. Yep. That he keeps switching his humps. Brain it's depository. Double. Because double. after 5 p.m. slip brains through slot and door. That cracks me up. Like, what, what are your qualifications to work at a brain depository? Right. Like, For one thing, how does this small, like, town have a brain depository? Well. But hey. 
Imagine the size of a brain depository yep. in a larger town. He startles himself with his own hand. It's a good gag. It's a great gag. It's a very, cow- very cowardly lion. Right. Shh, shh, shh. Hans Delbrook. Look to the camera. Snod. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yoink. Also. I will say, why is there a mirror? <laughs> right. Well, because otherwise he wouldn't be startled by himself. That makes sense. It should have just been like a door or yeah. something. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that one's done. I guess I'll just take this abnormal brain. It says, do not use this brain. <laughs> right on it. Shout out Shout out to my friend, uh, Abby Yeomans, who we call Abby Normal. Right. Hi, Abby. Abby something. Abby what? Abby normal. Abby normal? Where do you have to nail all those, put all those nails into the boots? Do you know what those are, Charles? What are those? They're boots for laying asphalt. Really? Yeah. And it's the so same you don't, thing. So you don't that... stick to the asphalt when it's hot. And it's the same thing Karloff wore. As Frankenstein, they were asphalt lane boots. That's a cool bit of trivia. I didn't know that. Thank you. That's a great bit of trivia. Thank you very much. I liked it. Me reading movies, re-meeting books about movies as a child pays off. There you go. You just didn't ever knew how long, but it paid off. Eventually, I would meet yeah. somebody who would think that my bullshit information was yeah. interesting. Now, why they're wearing masks, I have no idea. The guy's dead. Because social distancing. There. You, oh, that's true. Good point. Also, if anything goes wrong... This is a very like, socially distant movie, yes. Do you want, like, dead guy in your mouth? Good point. That's you good know, point. think about that. Yeah. The bits. Yeah. I say there's the possibility of electrocution. Do you understand? <laughs> <laughs> like, Why are you shouting? <laughs> they look up like, did you tie off the kites? Oh, okay. Of course. And the hump is switched again. Yeah. <laughs> never mind. Back. He's like, never yeah, mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doesn't the hump eventually just completely go away? No, I don't think so. Okay. I could be wrong, though. I don't know. It's been a while. So here they are re- recreating his grandfather's experiment. Getting their Mary Shelley on. Ooh, a little caressing of the hands. Wow. You know, oh, sweet mystery of life. At last, I found you. That's a, that's a dead body that you're like yeah. getting off. Elevate me. <laughs> now, right here. Right here. Oh, the platform. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. She's so cute. She is. Like I said, just great casting here. Oh, yeah. We have intellectual discussions. In fact, we were just having one as you arrived. (laughs) From that fateful day when stinking bits of slime first crawled from the sea and shouted to the cold stars, I am man. And our greatest, Man. our greatest dread has been always been the knowledge of our own mortality. But tonight, we shall hurl the gauntlet of science into the frightful face of death itself. Tonight, is somebody writing this down. Yeah, right. We shall ascend into the heavens. We shall mock the earthquake. We shall command the thunders. Okay. And penetrate into the very womb of impervious nature. Herself. I'm going to go ahead and do another MST3K quote. Yeah. And say, this is back when science didn't have to have any actual purpose. Right. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Make more flash Gordon noises and put more science stuff around. I want those goggles bad. Oh, yeah. Those are the best goggles. 
And I like how they're made out of metal, so yeah. like if anything touches him, yeah. his eyeballs are gonna fry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Especially yeah, since Jodie Whittaker got those kind of goggles on uh, Doctor Who. Oh yeah, did she? Yeah. Well, the, you know, when she's like working on stuff, she uses those kind of goggles. Okay. It's pretty awesome. Throw it, I say. Throw it. The, the third the works. switch, by the way, the works. is the works. The works. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's adorable. Light bright, making things with light. Love boat. Life. Now, this is like the great, greatest Gene Heck, or Gene Wilder performance. I love this moment right here. You got the two best genes in film history in the yeah, same movie pretty right much. there. Ooh, now I have X-ray vision. Yep, that's a great, that's Pink. a great shot right there. Pink. 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 Do you, do you like pink? I like pink very much, Lois. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about how that confused the hell of me when I was a kid? No. Because I didn't know what a planter was. Okay. So I thought he said planet. Oh, okay. So, so I you had no understand. idea that you had no idea what he that it was. She was he was referring to something in front of her. Right. I couldn't. I didn't understand how he could not see her underwear, but yeah. see other stuff because he's still on this planet. Yeah. He's still cooking. So he's still cooking. Yeah, leave him in there for a little longer. Yeah. Now flip him over so it gets done evenly. Yeah, 20 minutes on the other side. <laughs> yeah, three minutes a pound. That's all right. it'll take. Thud. I love Frederick. <laughs> I love Frederick's hair there. It just kind of goes everywhere. Oh. He goes totally mad scientist here. It's great. That's half of Gene Wilder's appeal. Right. Is that fabulous, fabulous hair. Yeah, just like in Willy Wonka. <laughs> Yeah, like when he gets at the very end of Willy Wonka where he gets really mad at yeah, Charlie. Right. You know, the whole, like, you stole fizzy lifting drinks and you bumped into the ceiling, which now has to be clean and sterilized, and you get nothing. That whole scene. His you get nothing. Scene. Good day, sir. Good day, sir. I said good day. <laughs> so here he is trying to be all cool about it. Quiet dignity and grace. <laughs> and then son of a bitch bastard I'll get you for this son of a bitch I'll get you for this you fargan nice whole son of a bitch you fargan sneaky bastard I don't want to live I don't want I don't to live mama <laughs> quiet dignity and grace yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> another nod to the camera Another fourth wall moment. Yep. Mama! So here we have the town villagers having a meeting. And sadly, um, Lorelai and Rory are not there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So basically what they're saying yeah. Points is, if you got that reference. We can't have a Frankenstein back in this town because, you know, crazy shit's going to happen yeah. if they come back. You would think they would have just gone into this house after he died and gotten rid of all of the science crap. Right, right. Exactly. It was just laying there. Just getting dusty down there. Maybe Frau Blucher wouldn't let anybody in the house. Maybe. Five, they're talking about five times before, which is a reference to um, the first five Universal horror films for, with Frankenstein. Right, right. So we're talking like the 1931 Frankenstein, The Bride of Frankenstein, Son of Frankenstein, Ghost of Frankenstein, and I'm not sure the fifth. Frankenstein versus the Wolfman. Frankenstein versus the Wolfman. So, yep. so here's uh, Kenneth Mars, his character. <laughs> Kenneth Mars, who Kemp. is like got his his Doctor Strange love hand. Right. This clockwork hand of his arm.
and apparently you can only understand him through subtitles. And once you get started, there is little chance of stopping it short of bloodshed. <laughs> did uh, whatever streaming service you're on just automatically turn on subtitles? No, I did them manually. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I have the subtitles on. I knew I was going to need it, so. Yeah, I'm just, I'm not listening to it. <laughs> how come no one needs monocles anymore? It's a good question. Like, how did we go from needing a monocle to never needing a monocle? Well, and his monocle is blacked out because oh, apparently he lost eye his eye. Yeah. <laughs> You yeah, can afford the eye patch. Over an eye patch, which is a fantastic gag. Yeah, Kenneth Mars is another underrated comedic actor. Right. Who, for years, I didn't know was not actually German. Right. Because he always has like a German accent. Like he has one in this. He had one in Malcolm in the Middle, and I think he has one in What's Up, Doc. So it's like everything I ever saw. Because he's he really good at playing that type of character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, for years, when I was a kid, I thought Helen Mirren was Russian. Oh, really? Because I had I had seen her in 2010, and I had seen her in um, uh, White Nights. And she's Russian in both of those. She has a Russian accent in both of those. And so then, later when I started seeing things like Excalibur and you know, other <laughs> movies that she's in, I'm like, oh, okay, she's actually English. Interesting. What the hell are you doing in the bathroom that day and night? Why don't you go out right, of there right. and give someone else a chance? I love how he just goes right into like this cockney screaming. Yeah. It's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, Igor is uh, um, great with the non sequiturs. Yes. Oh, guess who's getting all twitchy? Schwarzwalder uh. Kirschtort. <laughs> I'm not partial to resist myself. I do resist myself. Who are you talking to? You just made a yummy sound. So I thought you liked the dessert. I didn't make a yummy sound. But you did. I just heard it. I just heard you. It wasn't me. It wasn't. Well, look here. If it wasn't you and it wasn't you. (laughs) And now Gene Wilder breaks the fourth wall. Right. (laughs) I can't figure out how those switches would ever be a good idea. So I wonder who cleaned that lab. It had to be Igor, right? Uh, it's probably uh, blue hair. Um, Frau blue hair. Frau blue. Yeah. It's alive. Weird <laughs> science. <laughs> That's awesome, Phil. <Charles>. Thank you. <laughs> I love that we both did that together, like right. totally independent of each other. It's because we share a brain. Haven't you remembered? Yeah, pretty much. God help you. That we love him. The Abby Normal brain. We share. Normal brain. And I will say that Peter Boyle does a lot of great acting with his eyes in this. Oh, yeah. That's what he does. Doesn't have a lot of opportunity to use dialogue. Yeah, you can't really be subtle with Marty Feldman. Right. But he, you know, he has his little speech at the end, and that's about it. Yeah. The moaning and right, but all these guys. <laughs> Autoerotic asphyxiation. Why are you telling me that? <laughs> so, if anybody out there has not actually seen the James Whale Frankenstein, right, you should I recommend it, yeah. even though it's pretty gruesome and I also very much recommend 
Bride of Frankenstein because in Bride of Frankenstein you get Elsa Lanchester in a dual role. Right. Not only does she play the Bride of Frankenstein, she plays Mary Shelley. Wollstonecraft so. Shelley. Yep. Mm-hmm. So oh, apparently he's not very fond of f- fire. Nope, he's afraid of fire. Give him the what? Three syllables. Three syllables, so, okay. First syllable sounds like head. Sounds like head. Bed. A said. Said. Second syllable. Little word. This, that, Z. Said a. Uh-huh. Said a dirty word. He said a dirty word. <laughs> it's one. It's one word, dumbass. Said a give. Said a give. Give him yeah, the set a give. Set a give. Give. On the nosy. <laughs> to this day, when I talk about yeah. set a give, I call them set a gives. Right. Set a give. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, my my cat, one of my cats, yeah. uh, very bad at the vet. Right. Well, I, I think all cats are bad at the vet. Personally. Oh, mine was so bad that like two days before she was supposed to go to the vet, we went and yeah. picked up a sedative for her. Right. So we could give her a sedative before we took her in. She was so that you, bad. You gave her a pre-sedative to the sedative. A pre-set a give. Pre-set a give to the set a give. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So. Will you excuse me for a moment, dear? <laughs> <laughs> Igor. <laughs> Igor. May, may I speak to you for a moment? Speak to you for a moment. <laughs> Sit down, won't you? Thank you. No, no. Up here. (laughs) (laughs) I love how he sits with his legs crossed. Right. Like, yeah. Just all cool and relaxed. Yeah, he's great. Was it Hans Delbrooks? Was it Hans Delbrooks? No. Uh, Ah, good. Uh, Would you mind telling me... Whose brain did I put in? And you won't be angry? I will not be angry. I will not be angry. Abby someone. Abby someone. Abby someone? Abby who? Abby normal. Abby normal. (laughs) (laughs) I'm almost sure that was the name. Are you saying that I put an abnormal brain, brain. into In a, a seven, seven and a half foot long, foot 40, 54 inch wide gorilla? Gorilla! <laughs> Is that what you're telling me? Quick, quick, give him the <laughs> three syllables. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah. Um, bang, bang. Again, bang. Marty Feldman. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, his Doctor Strange left hand is fantastic. It's a great bit. You put that thing back on the operating table and strap it down tightly. Take this thing back to Baltimore. Right. <laughs> Boink. <laughs> Boink. I have to look normal. Ha! Ah, monsters! Shunk. <laughs> shunk. Shunk, shunk, shunk. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty It's not bad. Nice grouping. Monsters are passe. Yes. Yeah, there's a... Shunk. Um, I love he sticks the He sticks the darts in his arm. I know. This is such a great fight gag here. Yep. Um... There's a castle in Romania that... I love it when his back is turned. Steps right into the bullseye. Thump. Thump, 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 thump. Spit take. <laughs> <laughs> nice grouping. Nice grouping. Love that. And where there's a castle in Romania mm-hmm. that's... Um, the fascist dictator Nikolai, Ce- uh, Nikolai Ceausescu had his yeah. eyes on. Okay. And the Romanian culture has a lot of superstitions, and he was a very superstitious man himself. And 
he wanted the castle for the state, aka himself. But some of the there was a somebody who worked at the castle, one of the servants, told him a story that there was some disease in the wood yep. of the castle. And it scared him away. He never came back to it. So I love that, that he throws a dart and he goes through the window yeah. and the cat screeches. Now that's Mel Brooks, by the way, doing the voice of the cat. Doing the voice of the cat? Yeah, that's yeah. Mel Brooks. So essentially what we're learning here is that uh, Frederick can't play darts when he's lying. Yeah. So. Like, well, this is fun. Yeah. Kenneth Mars wearing a monocle over an eye patch is right. fucking hilarious. Isn't it? It's just, and it's just like, that's the best thing about these sight gags is that they just don't, they don't mention this one at all. No, not I mean, like the. They're subtle. That's what makes them great. They're not just yeah. overt. Not like the, um, not like the hump, but they, this one, they just never bring it up. Yeah. It's really funny. <laughs> He's all like yelling at his arm. It's great. Hmm. Sorry, I'm yawning. But I'm drunk. <laughs> it's drunk cinema. One of the police has a dart in his head and then tires and the are, head. The tires and the are tires flat. The tires are flat. Yeah. Yep. Even the spare. Oh, what's Frau Blucher do up to? She, by the way, is wearing a very traditional Romanian blouse. Right. Victor! Victor. We have done it! Victor, yeah. Victor. Oh, she set you free. Did you like that, my shithead? That's what Scheitzkamp means yes, in Yes, exactly. German, yes, yes, it does. Which is, of course, the first thing we all learned in, like, eighth grade German. Yeah. Or, in my case, uh, ninth grade German. That and frickin' Z. What is that? That's like fuck you in German. That works. It's an important one. Yeah, yeah, you gotta know that one. I'm going to set him free! free. He'll (laughs) kill you. No, he won't. Not this one. He's as gentle as a lamb. He has a rotten brain. It's not rotten. It's a good brain. <laughs> Ixnay on the Otten Ray. I need to keep watching on the Otten Ray. Yeah. Oh, big Latin. I know what he likes. Do, 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 do. The, um... I'm going to grab it. I'm going to grab it. Gonna keep I want you. the music. They're in the air. Yeah, there's a great Simpsons where the kids are trying to talk pig Latin in front right. of their mother. Yeah. To say, uh, I wait, as we on wait on tway ute. And the kids just look at each other and go, ap cray. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You play the music in the middle of the night. Yes. Yes. To get us in the laboratory. Yes. yes. That was your cigar in the smoldering in the ashtray. Yes. It was you who left my grandfather's book for, out for me to find. Yes. So that I went, yes. I love these and You were, Victor were, yes. Yes. Say it. He is my boyfriend. Ah. She does with the yeses when she does the violin. Right. But violin right. moves. Yes. To accentuate it. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. He's free if you're here. So, you gotta like somebody who enjoys their work. Yeah, you gotta love it. So I gotta keep watching the deleted scenes and maybe I'll figure it out, but who is Hans Delbruck? Hans Delbruck. Um, I'm trying to remember. Let me see if I can look it up real quick. Okay. I gotta say, Charles, I've had a candle going all day long. Right. And it really smells good. It smells like hot Oreos. Really? Yeah, it's freaking delicious smelling. 
<laughs> so apparently Hans Gottlieb Leopold Delbruck was a German historian. Okay. One of the first modern military historians basing his method of research on the critical examinations of ancient sources, including like disciplines like demography and economics. Oh, okay. So, okay. I wonder what the, uh, what the connection like, is there. Chiefly concerned with the history of the art of war. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So essentially he's like the Sun Tzu. Okay. Of, Ger- of Germany, apparently. Interesting. So this, uh, scene with the little girl putting flowers right. in the water is a... Now throw a kiss and say bye-bye. Is an exact, uh, not to Frankenstein. Yeah. And in Frankenstein, and this was cut out of the movie. Was it? Wasn't it a blind girl in Frankenstein? Um, I don't think she. Was I can't in... remember. It's been so long since I watched yeah. that movie. But in Frankenstein, I could be wrong. And they cut this. They cut this out of Frankenstein for a long time. It was not in in subsequent prints. But yeah, Frankenstein gets the wrong idea that beautiful things go in the water. So he throws a little girl in the water and right. kills her, which is why the townspeople are. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. girl just like, ah, oh, she's back in her bed. She's back in her bed. Yeah. This is why the townspeople are so enraged at him is because he killed that little girl. So. Oh, yeah. So here we have, we go to. Harold, the blind man. We're going to Gene Hackman's house, everybody. Yep. He's making Yoda soup. It's just a little itty bitty place. Otisburg. Otisburg. Miss Tessmarker, she's got her own place. Otisburg. <laughs> bye bye, California. Bye bye, California. Hello, New West Coast. My West Coast. Lutherville, Casa del Lac, Otisburg. <laughs> Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) So, yes, this movie is absolute proof that Hackman can do comedy. Yeah, and again, Gene Hackman is another actor, I think, who acts without ego. Right. Because this is not... No, because he's got got this real, like, fake beard on and made up to look like an old man. It's it's a tiny part. It's not a glamorous role. Yeah, it's, it's a tiny little part. And he, but he still does yeah. a great job. Now keep in mind, this is Hackman around the French connection. So he's a big star at this, this point. This is like major Gene Hackman, you know? Yeah. I mean, he's, and he's willing to do this. This is af- this is like around Papa Doyle. It's after yeah. um, Bonnie and Clyde. Right. So how about a nice bowl of soup? Actually, that does sound pretty awesome. Right now. <laughs> and, uh, you got like Zesta crackers? <laughs> yeah, seriously. I know what it means to be cold and hungry. He's such a nice man. I mean, that's a, in Frankenstein, he kills this old man, yeah. too. So, yeah. again, this is why the townspeople are not particularly. He's a nice just, man, a kind man. And, and he's precious. And he's precious. <laughs> I love this. Because he's blind, he can't see the soup bowl. Get it? Right, he can't, he can't, he can't. Ah! <laughs> right in his lap. Both times. <laughs> now, how about a little wine with that soup? Yeah, this doesn't, uh, doesn't particularly go very well for... Uh, no, none of this goes well. For the monster. This is a literal psych gag. Literally, yeah. That's a good one. This is gonna it's not the world's a toast. A toast oh. to long friendship. Smash. Work. It's like, ugh. Seriously. <laughs> See, he does great acting with his eyes in this yeah, movie. I know. Frankenstein eye roll. 
Oh gosh, the cigars. Yep. You gotta light cigars on fire. Well, you know what's coming now. Mm. Urgh, fire oh. bad, tree pretty. You don't want to hold it like that. No, fire is good. Fire, fire is our friend. Fire, fire. walk fire. with me. Fire, fire. The magician longs to see. One chance so. out between two worlds. Fire, walk with me. Got a light? Got a light? Got a light? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lights the stone on fire. See, this is why corpses don't like fire. Yeah, go figure. It's not like they can heal up from nope. that. Yep. Wait. Wait. Where are you going? going. I was going to make espresso. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I think that line is so funny, but that line is so funny. It's a funny scene. Yeah. No, just that line in particular. Mm-hmm. I was going to make espresso. <laughs> Well, it's just so unexpected. I know. It's just it's just ridiculous. Right. It's ridiculous. Oh. Somebody's in disguise. Oh, somebody's... Uh, Walk really this good. way. No, yeah, this way. Come on. This, with the... And apparently, Froderick is suddenly a violinist. Well, yeah, he's, you know. Well, he's a Frankenstein. Well, to be honest with you, Charles, yeah. I could, uh, you know, it's not that hard to learn that piece. Okay, that's true. Yeah. Violin is not an easy instrument, yeah. but it's Set a give. Cool. Give him the set a give. Set a give. But uh, <laughs> if you're just playing one note the, at a time. Takes all three of them to bring him down. A seven foot, seven and a half foot long? Yeah. Yep. 54 and a half inch wide. Gorilla! Dog pile on the rabbit. Dog pile on the rabbit. Bring me that candle. Bag. Frau Blicker is wondering, why is it lit? <laughs> oh, is that what you're supposed to do with candles? He looks very 70s with his turtleneck. Yep. It's his tactile neck. Yeah. Tactile neck. <laughs> tactile neck. What is that from? Archer. Yes, that's right. Thank you. It's from Archer. The tactile neck. The tactile neck, yeah. It's been too long since I've watched Archer. Yeah. There's always time for Archer. There's always time for Archer. Charles, you've seen the pictures of me dressed up like Pam and Chris dressed up. Yes, it was it was beautiful. It was fantastic. <laughs> Loved it. What was you, funny? You got the little you got the little uh, dolphin puppet <laughs> dolphin puppet. Yeah, I had yeah. a wig and a dolphin puppet. That was great. That was fantastic. <laughs> and what was funny is on because I bought that puppet on Amazon. Yeah. And what happened was is I it's a uh, um it's a Based on your purchase history, you might like these other items. <laughs> Pearl necklaces. Plus size cardigans. Like all this other Pam stuff. So everybody right. who wanted to be Pam bought that. That's, that's what, the, out, that's me what out they here. bought. Get me the hell out of here. Yep. Joking. Can't you take a joke? Ha 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 ha. Christ, get me out of here. The bitch, I will cut you. Cut you up. Okay, I will say, open the goddamn door, I'll kick your rotten heads in! Nine. Three. I don't care who so, is in the uh, if, hi. If, if, <laughs> if there's a fight, I am not betting against right. Cloris Leachman, okay? No. Hello, handsome. <laughs> I love how it looks around. Yeah, it's like, who? Yeah. People laugh at you. People hate you. You know that? But why do they hate you? Because they are jealous. 
so jealous. Look at that boyish face. Look at that sweet oh, smile. Look at that sweet smile. I like how he has like a literal zipper on his neck. Right, right. <laughs> and um Gene that Wilder has is seriously rocking the guy liner right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what's not a good Frankenstein? You know he kind of looks a little bit like Brando here? He Oh, he does. Yeah, he totally does. Not I, Wally Brando. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not Wally Brando. Not Wally Brando, but Marlon Brando. This is a good this boy. This is a good boy. This is a mother's angel. This is a mother's angel. Yeah, you know what is not a Frankenstein that I like all that much? We want the world to know that we love him. I don't like the Kenneth Branagh Frankenstein all that much. It's just it's all right. It's just gross. I mean, as yeah. much as much as I love uh, De Niro, it's just kind of gross. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of a weird one. I do like that scene though, where Helena Bonham Carter breaks the lantern over her head and catches herself on fire. That's always fun. I just think that, I think it's a beautiful shot. I think it's a really neatly, a really well done scene. Since the creation of <laughs> fire, on fire. Uh, not so much on the fire. Yeah, here it is. My name. This is where he embraces his history. My name is Frankenstein. Is Frankenstein. Dun, dun, dun. Tonight only, Dr. F. Frankenstein presents The Creature, the creature. a, a startling new experiment in reanimation. Transylvania Neurological Society. Yep. By the way, Charles Bucharest is not in Transylvania. Right. It's Romania. Well, no, Transylvania is a region of, of Romania, but it's that right. Bucharest is not in it. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So what is in Transylvania? Transylvania? Uh, Brasov, which is okay. a just little city. And uh, Bran, which is where Bran Castle is. Right. That's all there. Okay. So pretty small then. No, I mean, there's other stuff there, but... Um, that's all you can remember. That's where I went. That's where I was. Um, Mamaya, I think, is there, too. Okay. So. And now may I present to you Dr. Baron Frederick von Frankenstein. I feel like this should have been Lloyd Bridges. Yeah, somebody. Yeah. Could have been better. <laughs> He does know how to rock a tux, though. He does, yeah. Yeah, he's he's an interesting one, Gene Wilder. It's like, mm -hmm. there's there's something, like, oddly smolderingly sexy about him sometimes. Right, right. That con that demeanor he has. Yeah, exactly. It's like I the could presence, where, yeah. I could see where Gilda Radner was coming from. Yeah. You kind of get it now? Yeah. I mean, wasn't he married, like, four times? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, at least I'm three. Kidding. He was married at least three times. Yeah, I know he's obviously married after Gilda passed. But... Yeah, he got married after Gilda passed, and he was married. I think her name is Linda, and he was married to her until he died. And yeah, they were they were married. My God, they were married almost thirty, now nah, like twenty five years, I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay, this is not the creature, but you know, whatever. Yeah, that's a different universe of movie. We are Here's scientists. Like, like, do these people recognize this guy as the criminal that was hanged? Like, is that what they're right. scared? Yeah, no, you would think, right? Or it's just like, oh, hey, there's this big dude with, like... Yeah. Who, he's dressed in a sheet. Like, I mean, can you I mean, can you imagine it would be like, you know, hey, here's this new, new discovery in neurological science. Right. And then somebody right. finds out Ted Bundy or something. That would be, so, that would be scary. So, oh, hey, he's walking. Yep. Heel to toe. Heel to toe. Heel to toe. Backwards. Now, do the hokey pokey and turn yourself about. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. 
Yeah. Give him a cracker. I don't think I've heard that song. Yeah. <laughs> like in like seriously like thirty five years. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> but now for what are you about to see next? We must enter quietly into the realm of genius. genius. Wild E Coyote Super Genius. I love the way that rolls off. <laughs> Dominon Heron. <laughs> what was a m articulate mess? Lifeless tissues. Tissues. And it pre now present a culture sophisticated man about town. Man about town. Yep. <laughs> oh, and here we have it. Though. Hit it. <laughs> <laughs> if you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go where fashion sits? Putting on the reeds. <laughs> And now I want to listen to the taco song. Seriously. Why not me? Dressed up like a million dollar trooper. Trying my heart to look like Gary Cooper. No Super man. duper. <laughs> Come, let's mix with Rockefellers. Walk with sticks. Put under it. <laughs> Love this boy. I love him. Give the little chin. The little chin thing. The chin action. Chin, chin action. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Just in case you were wondering, yes, you're watching a Mel Brooks movie. Yeah, if you weren't sure. Yeah, this is it. I'm going to show you something cool, Charles. Tap Dancing Frankenstein. Yes. You want something cool? Do, 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 do. Yeah, sure. Nice. You've got the taco putting on the Ritz album. The 12 inch. It's the 12 inch. The 12 inch. Yep. The LPE. I do. Nice. Oh, the audience is applauding here. Uh, nice. Wow. You know what oh. happens to candles when, the, when they're in a tin? The tin gets right. hot. No, everybody, uh, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Get a little, uh, startled by that, um, yeah, you know, when stage, you light, stage light, stage light, a theater. Okay. Right. With a bunch of well-dressed yeah. people. It never ends right. well. Where'd all these people get fruit and vegetables? I know all these people who wear these really nice clothes. Yeah. They've got like, all this... vegetables to throw. I mean, how the hell does that right. happen? Were they just there at the seats when they came in? I think, I think there was maybe a sale. Outside. Must be. Must be. So they thought, like, Arr. we're going to need to go to the market. Stage tomorrow. diving. We might as well just do it right now. What? Go to the market, you know? We'll just bring the vegetables into the theater with there you us. Go. Right. It saves time. Yeah, it'll save some time. Who's it going to hurt? To the lumber yard. Oh, wait. That's later. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> Oh. Kids oh. like chains. Poor monster. He actually hasn't really done anything wrong yet. So. No. Yeah. We did kind of like get angry and threaten some people. Well, you wouldn't like him if he was angry. Right. <laughs> nice. Yeah, done. he got angry, but. Uh... Chained like a beast in a cage. Beast in a cage. I could find a way to equalize the imbalance in the cerebral spinal fluid, why he'd be as right as rain. Right as rain. Yeah, that's all it takes. It's the it's the Oracle from Matrix. I love these I love this this you know, the science in these old movies. Right. So oh there's only one obvious explanation. Exactly. <laughs> and it's absolutely going to work. I love the uh filter <laughs> on yeah. the scene. That makes her dress all sparkly. Right. The star, the star filter. Well, the sequins. Yeah. <laughs> Again, he's breaking the fourth wall. And right. a dead body was on this like just three days ago. <laughs> what is it? I, don't bother me when I'm working. 
you must have got ahead of me. Mm. No, I'm drunk, so my brain is skipping ahead. Oh, you're skipping ahead. Okay, that's you're it's freaking just my me brain. Out. It's like, not you. It's my brain. Okay. All right. Again, a dead Smoke body. If you know, got him. I know you put a sheet on that, but a dead body was written right. on that. Body. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I told you never to interrupt me while I'm working. While I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> You see, your fiance will be arriving any second. Any second? What? Shit, 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 shit. Here tonight? I suggest you put on a tie, bird. <laughs> yeah. I think phases or offends Frau Blucher. Frau Blucher is savage, yo. He's savage, yeah. And this is my favorite scene. With Marty Feldman in her. This yes. whole, you know, <laughs> barking at the, yeah, at the fur. Surprised? Love me? Love you? I say, Darling, it's been a long day. I say that to Chris all the time. Yeah. I say, Darling. Like, Darling. <laughs> Surprised? Yes. Love me? Surprised? Yes. <laughs> Lovey. Well. Yes. What? Well, let's turn in. Oh. Shh. Say nothing. Act casual. Act casual. <laughs> Look, she's like totally into him too. I love it. Right, right, right. <laughs> if it wasn't for that stupid monster, he could have got, you know, got lucky there. And this is the absolute greatest impression of Groucho Marx I've ever seen. Right. Yes. Yeah. My financier, I mean my fiance. Yes. You take the blonde and I'll take the one in the table. You do do. That's oh, the greatest that's... Groucho Marx impression. Yeah, exactly. Take the one in the table. <laughs> take the one in the table. If you need any help with the girls, let me know. <laughs> yeah. We were just having one as you were driving up. Igor, will you mind giving me a hand with the bags? Yep. Certainly. You take the blonde, I'll take the one with the table. Take the one with the table. <laughs> he bites it. It's hilarious. She just whacks him. She can't keep a straight face. Yeah, right. I don't know. I don't know how they got through that scene. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that had a... If you need any help with the girls, get in there. Why you? <laughs> but Mo. Why I oughta? Why I oughta? Yeah, you and me is going to be pals. Nice and cozy. Yeah, like I said, he hasn't actually done anything wrong, so... No. No, he's just kind like, of sitting there chilling. I feel like this octopus of chains that he has around his neck is a little bit unnecessary. Oh, uh, what's the matter? Don't you like fire? You want to cry? I'm going to make you cry? What, what are you going to do? Cry for me? Cry for me. Cry for me. Baby wants to cry. Little boys ain't supposed to play with fire. Do you want to play with fire, little boy? Do you want to play with fire, little girl? He used to flick matches at me. Wake up and make me breakfast. You know, you need a license to drive a car. You need a <laughs> license to catch a fish. Don't let any asshole be a father. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's that's lovely. <laughs> that's great. Thank you. My parenthood moment. Yep. Now let's storm the Capitol. Wait. Oh wait. Oh wait. Yeah, that's a yeah, riot is an ugly thing. Yes. And I think it's just about time we had one. Or <laughs> heaven is more British or dare he will. Curse the day that he was born a Frankenstein. Frankenstein. What? I said he will curse the day that he was born a Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Oh, boy. Something's going on. His, ac his accent is so bad, even the villagers don't even the villagers understand him. That, uh, you know, yeah, don't understand his accent. <laughs> yeah. So he's at her heels. Yeah. 
It's broken loose. Darling, you mustn't worry so. She's so disinterested in all of his crap. Right. So, would you like to know what yes. Madeline Kahn did before she became an actress in comedy? Sure. What, what, what did she do? She was an opera singer. I can see it. She's got the pipes. We know yeah. that. Mm-hmm. As this movie proves perfectly. Yeah, she's studying to be an opera singer. and uh, I can see it. Did some good comedies and then found her real calling in some of right. the greatest some of the greatest comedies in the history of comedy. Right. Two this of one, them, actually. This one, Muppet Movie, Blazing, Blazing Saddles, Saddles. Yep. Blue. She's just fabulous. That's a tough choice. Tough choice. I suppose you're right. Yeah. I like how he now looks pretty much exactly like the painting of his grandfather. Right. That's a good observation. It's probably the same jacket, isn't it? I, it might be the same jacket. It's definitely the same tie. Yeah. It does look... I, I never noticed that, but I think you're absolutely right. I'm <laughs> sure that was intentional. So, I have to say, I read a couple of Gene Wilder's novels. Mm-hmm. I wasn't a huge fan. Okay. Not, not, not a big fan of his pro style. These weren't great, you know. Don't let the big bugs bite. You know, it's not like I need to I need to read one of the Gene Hackman spy novels. I would love to read one of those. I um, would like to know I didn't know he did that. I need to check that as out. Glory, glory, hallelujah. She's really into the hairbrushing, by the way. I don't see that now. Noisy commotion. Noisy, yeah, noisy commotion is the, <laughs> is the caption. Yeah, flaming torches were for when you're hunting actual <laughs> monsters, not when white supremacists decided that they didn't have anything anymore because they couldn't offend, they couldn't oppress anyone. Right. Yeah, and he's uh scared her so badly now she has uh Bride of Frankenstein. <laughs> I love that he walked into a tree. Yeah. <laughs> what you- hmm, she's done something different with her hair. I'm not sure yeah. what. That's what orgasms will do for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> what what are you? What are you gonna do to me? Mm. Mm. <laughs> Calm down. I'm not afraid of you. I'm expecting I'm a very important call. Back by 30, I'm expecting <laughs> a very important phone call. Speak, speak. Mm. <laughs> Woof. Woof. <laughs> That's two woofs in one movie. Two woofs in one movie. Enormous Schwanstucker. <laughs> Schwanstucker. Oh, oh the sweet mystery of life. At last I found you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> If it wasn't for the Skype breaking up, that would have been great. <laughs> no, oh, sorry. I, I probably made no, it, it was my horrible voice. <laughs> oh, no, no, you did my, fine. My horrible screechy voice. <laughs> no, that was fine. That was good. I've been drinking beer all night. I'm very phlegmy. <laughs> I can't help it. Ooh, the heart <laughs> cut. Yeah, heart. the heart wipe. Heart wipe, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love this scene so much. So apparently he's not intimidated by that fire. No, uh uh-uh. You just need to, you know, you need to relax. Right. They're blazing. Penny for your thoughts. You're incorrigible. (laughs) You're incorrigible. Little zipper neck. (laughs) It's like a literal, like, it's like four-inch zipper. It's so funny. I love that delivery. Seven's always been my lucky number. Seven's always been my lucky number. 
you hot monster. <laughs> <laughs> this is, is probably that, my is that music? This is probably, probably my just favorite so cottage. my yeah. favorite moment yeah. of Madeline Khan on screen is right here. Yep. You better all like Oh. Seven or eight quick ones and you're off with the boys to boast and brag. Oh my god, I love him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean the that genius. and her and Mrs. White's speech about uh, yeah. hating a vet are the best things I think she's ever done. She's been well no, I'd I'd argue the um the I'm so tired song in Blazing Saddles. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let's so. face it, I'm exhausted. But her, her as Mrs. White, flames, yep. flames on the sides of my face, breathing, yep. heaving, heaving breaths. That's that's yep. a good one too. But I just I love her with a seven or eight quick and you're off with the boys to boast and brag. Oh, I think I love him. Points for Igor Igor on the flugelhorn. On the horn there, yeah. Yeah. Oh yes, the flugelhorn. Da 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 da. It's the music that's bringing him back. It's bringing him back. Come on. So I'm sorry, but I don't think any amount of excellent violin music can tear you away from sex with Madeline Kahn. Uh, no. <laughs> no. I really don't think that that's believable. <laughs> what I don't get is if they're trying to get him up there, why did they give him a ladder? Why don't they want to just, why isn't somebody down at the front door to just open the door? Right, again? right, exactly. Come on, yeah. come on, you can do it. Okay, that was awfully you, fast. Yeah, right. You could throw me the rope. <laughs> <laughs> How could you do that to Otis? <laughs> yeah. I don't suppose you could have speed things up. My creation! Is it real? From my heart and from my hands, why don't people understand my interest? Woo, we are science. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> yeah. You sure you want to go through with this? It's the only thing that could save him now. Save him now. Flash. Ah. King of the impossible. <laughs> Electricity. Electricity. <laughs> I think we're doing a little shuffle there on the so great. balcony. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe we've had to live in a world without Marty Feldman for almost three right. years. That's so sad. Right. Yeah. Just think of what we could have had. Mm hmm. But at least we got this. At least we have Young Frankenstein. That is very true. Yes. Yep. <laughs> now, one second, more or less. More or less, yeah. That's important that here. What is going on there? Like, brain transference means, like, you know, cerebral yeah. fluid, I guess? I don't know. Well, the, well, they're transferring the cerebral spinal fluid. Yeah, I guess so, but... Yeah. I love that they use him as a battering ram. I know. I spy dry. I spy dry. Um, what I don't I understand. I dry. Did you think, I mean, let's, can we just keep in our minds that Peter Boyle yeah, they are is a dead body? They are like a the capital. Show? What? They are. Exactly. One of them's going to take a lectern. Yes. Exactly. Um. <laughs> oh, look. They're sitting at Nancy Pelosi's desk. <laughs> I still, feel, I just, I feel like he would have had infection after having this procedure done. Yes, yeah, Doctor Frankenstein would. <gasps> oh, we stopped. Time has stopped before fifteen minutes. Something's wrong. Put that man down. It's the monster. I said, put that man down. Oh, excuse me. Oh, just who do you think you are? Did you who do you these think you are? About? I am the monster. 
Yeah, I, I see that you are the monster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, uh, I mean, I am sure yeah. that the producers of Malcolm in the Middle chose mm -hmm. Kenneth Mars and Cloris Leachman for exactly these accents. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to be, yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure that that was a, that was a conscious well, why choice. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? They obviously had to be fran fans of Young Frankenstein. If you can get Kenneth Mars and and Cloris Leachman, you, you give them the accents that they have in uh, Young Yeah. That's how it works. As long as they're willing to do it, just let them do it. Yeah, just let them go. Stand back oh. out of the way. He used his... Give me, brain to give, me a, give me a calmer brain. And somewhat more... Sophisticated way of expressing myself. Just expressing myself. Yeah, I love I'm going to do a podcast. I love how he says um, this little speech here, but then he just goes mm -hmm. back to making mm, noises. <laughs> right. And reading the Wall Street Journal in bed. I think that's so funny. And she's so happy. Oh, Victor. Victor, Victor. Und let us all go to my house for a little sponge cake with a little wine. A little wine. And shit. <laughs> <laughs> to the lumberyard. To the lumberyard. <laughs> That's great. Oh, my God. So funny. Mm -hmm. I love Igor's lab coat over his hood. Well, maybe it's not the same jacket and tie. I thought it was. No. Nope. It looks like it's a similar different. tie type thing, though. But hello, Mrs. Frankenstein. Mrs. Frankenstein, what a wonderful name. Okay. Cat. Do you say so? Oh, right. Oh, oh. Wow! 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 Or as they say in the Muppet movie, when a German scientist tells you to hold on to your hat, it's not idle conversation. Hold on to your hat. I'm holding on to it, darling. Just a few more seconds. <laughs> oh, there's the violin theme. Yeah, here we go. She's humming it. Yep. Something stirring. Something awakens deep inside of the doctor. Father, the sleeper must awaken. Must awaken! Oh, wait, that was a different movie. That's a different movie. <laughs> Again, she's back with the battle theme of the Republic. Right. <laughs> it's yes. about. That's a good question. I, hope I love these weird. He's, he's reading the Wall Street boring. Journal. He did it just for you, and he meant so well. Yeah. That you liked it. Mm -hmm. Honey, did you see? Put a special hamper. Put a special for... hamper in here just for your shirts and poo-poo undies. <laughs> <laughs> Going full bride. Oh. <sighs> Snorts. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> <laughs> she almost falls over. Yeah. <laughs> well, Park is my favorite right here. <laughs> yeah. What? Okay, Charles, explain this trope yeah. to me of yeah. men who seem so put out by the concept of having sex with their wives. Like, what? The, what is that? I have no idea. I don't get it, man. It's just really. Bad. I don't get it either. <laughs> I think it's just that for this part, you know, he's. Yeah, he I, just I, I, kind of wants to be left alone to read his paper. It's just a trope, but I don't know yeah, where I know. it came from. Yeah, right. Also, I think this is a lot of cool. Mm. I still think this is a lot of clothes to be wearing on your wedding night. Right. <laughs> like, obviously, he got something from the monster as well. He got something from the monster as well. Yeah. Back to the flugelhorn. Yep. Uh, is he like outside their bedroom window? That is so creepy. 
<laughs> yeah, it's kind of creepy. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Oh, my mm-hmm. goodness. <laughs> Sadistic Jailer. That's an interesting thing to put on your... Uh... Right, resume. Yeah, to put on your resume. Yeah. Yep. Why is Gene Jailer? Hackman? And that's the thing. Like I said, no ego. Gene Hackman is literally last in the credits. Right. But I think it was a good call not to have Mel Brooks in this movie because I think Marty well, doesn't need to be in every movie. Well, Marty Feldman's mugging, I don't think, needed competition. Right. And that's our movie, yeah. everybody. And that's our movie. There we have Hope it. You enjoyed it like as much as we did. One of the greatest comedies in the history of American cinema. Exactly. It's fantastic. All right. <laughs> Well, are you uh, sober enough to uh, give us a rating for this one? Sure, sure. Okay. Um, let me see. What, uh, what do I want to give this a rating for? Oh, I got it. I got it. This one gets okay. nine and a half out of ten extra dollars. Right, because you're very particular about giving that the full ten, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Yeah. What about you? Well, I am not as particular. I you love this movie. Yep. I'm giving it the full 10 out of 10. Full, the full full 10 what, Charles? 10 out of 10 Abby Normal Brains. Abby Normal Brains. That's a good one, too. Yeah. I was going with that or Still Warm Violins. Still Warm. I love that. The violin is still warm. Like, what yeah. the hell? <laughs> I know. It, it was just such a random quote. <laughs> that I uh, just made me think of that. All right. Um, sadly, we did not get drunk mail again. So it makes me sad. Guys. I feel like, I, feel like yeah. I know. I know Christine is judging us. She needs to be right judging us on paper or on email. Well, she judges us because she loves us, right? Oh, I know she judges us because she loves yeah. us. I'm just saying. I know she's right. listening to us and judging us. Yeah. So Christine, if you're listening, we want yeah. to hear from you. Exactly. And, and if you're not Christy, we still want to hear from you. We still want to hear from you, for sure. Yeah. So drop us a line at Drunk Cinema so you can re- reach us. And this is how you can find us, guys. Drunk Cinema Podcast at gmail.com. That's Drunk Cinema Podcast at the gmail.com. Or you can find us on Twitter at Drunk Cinema Cast on Twitter. Please do. And follow us there. Or um, like us on at Drunk Cinema on Facebook. We'd love it if you did, and uh, please share our links if you're so inclined, if you enjoy what we do, and uh, tell your friends about us, if you would. Yeah, definitely, definitely appreciate it. This is only our fifth episode, guys, so so we yeah. uh, obviously still want to get the word out about us. I mean, and, let's uh, be we honest, use your, We can use your help. Yeah? Let's be honest. You and I would probably just do this. Right. You know? But it's better when we can share it with other people. Exactly. So yeah. we kind of want to share our love of these movies with everybody. We share That's kind of why we're doing it. And being so, uh, so hopefully if you share your love in return of this podcast, we do definitely appreciate that. All right. Yep. Zan, where can they find you in the meantime? I don't know. On the internet. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that narrows it down. Yeah. <laughs> Zan Sprouse, Facebook, Udenax19, Instagram, and Twitter. Yeah. Um, I can, I, uh, 99% of the time, I'm sober when you and I talk on Ghost about all things tangentially Twin Peaks and David Lynch related. Right. And, uh. You're doing pretty good tonight. Yeah, it's mostly, I'm just sort of getting like a little loopy. It's not like, I mean, it's not like Batman was. I mean, Batman was, that was, I was drunk. You were, I think I need you to were kind of that, you were kind of that way for uh, Buckaroo Banzai too. Well, yeah, there's that. Yeah, um, yeah. I, need, I think Skype is drunker than you are at the moment. Skype is always drunker than me. Yeah, I need to start um, drinking harder liquor. I think I'm do this because I'm just a little bit loopy and very tired. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's what we're. That's what you're working on right now. Yeah, exactly. And then um, I apparently am going to be talking about um, the the towering inferno in some way uh, in a couple of years <laughs> with. Uh, our friends right. Nick and Rachel Friend on uh, Gold Standard, the Oscars podcast. Yeah, everybody check that out, please, because uh, DJ Nick and Rachel, they're both friends of ours, and obviously Zan is wonderful on that podcast. 
I do my best. So, uh, so everybody check that out because if you love all the the wonderful trivia that Zan has at her fingertips, you would uh, you would do yourself a big big favor by checking that out. And next time on uh, Gold Standard, we will be doing uh, the Lost Weekend, which is a movie about people getting drunk. So there you go. Hey, that all kind of ties in. What other kinds of stuff do you do on the internet, Charles? Uh, let's see if I can remember. Okay, at Charles Skaggs on Twitter, at Charles Skaggs on Instagram, Facebook, of course, Charles Skaggs in the Hilliard, Ohio, and my blog of geeky things. Damn good coffee. And hot. Damn good coffee. And hot, where I talk about all the stuff we talk about here on Drunk Cinema. So, like, all these wonderful movies, including, well, hey, you know, Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai, or yep. Frankenstein, or... What we've got coming up next, and also comic book sci-fi news, news of my other podcasts for the South Gate Media Group, including the Phantom Zone podcast they do with DJ Nick mm-hmm. and Jesse Jackson, where right now we're talking WandaVision, and obviously this show is getting more and more interesting by the episode, and tonight's episode that aired here on Friday, uh, you know, January, was it? the uh, 5th or excuse uh-huh. me, February 5th, February 5th, excuse February 5th. Me, that, um, you know, that was just, you know, another great example of that. So please check us out on the Phantom Zone podcast. And then next stop everywhere, the Doctor Who podcast where Jesse Jackson is sort of special guest companions. Like, Hey, a certain Zan Sprouse from time to time. <laughs> yep. Join us to talk classic who and modern Doctor Who and Torchwood, Sarah Jane adventures, whatever, you know, anybody's interested in, and right now we're in the middle of, we just recorded our first part of the four-part Trial of a Time Lord. Yeah, that's a... Season 23 from Classic Doctor Who from 1986, starring Colin Baker, Nicola Bryant, and soon-to-be Bonnie Langford. So, hope everybody checks that out. Rachel Friend from the Fighters Fandor Girls podcast and Gold Standard joined us. She jumped on. She jumped on the chance at that one. That's a good. Pretty one much. Too. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. She um, as as she said on the podcast, she said all you have to do is just say the magic words and she's there. So uh, apparently those magic words are Colin Baker, and then boom, she appears like you know genie and I dream of genie. She's so. like Candyman. You just say Colin Baker three times, and Rachel's like, I heard you talking about uh, <laughs> Colin Baker. I'm here for you. Yeah. So it's good because. Where this will be, these will be these last four stories are going to be the last ones that we're covering on Next Stop Everywhere, at least the first time around. Yeah. So check those out before we start doing Colin Baker's Big Finish audios. So okay. check that out. Also, Titan Talk to Titans podcast, which is on hiatus. But uh, DJ Nick, Jesse, and I, we talk Titans and Doom Patrol. So stay tuned as we're waiting for season three of both of those shows on HBO Max. And then, well, hey, this Ghost with the Twin Peaks podcast yeah, that certain Zan Sprouse and I talk, where we talk Twin Peaks stuff, David Lynch stuff, and just like here on Drunk Cinema, whatever pop culture nonsense pops into our head at any particular given moment in time. Well, and I'll, I'll give you a spoiler yeah. for, for next time on Ghost with Charles. Right. Dick Laurent is dead. <laughs> so, just so you know. Yes. Dick Laurent is dead. We just recently discussed Wild at Heart, starring Nicolas Cage and Laura Dern, the David Lynch film from 1989. And coming up next, we're going to be discussing, well, hey, that certain Lost Highway movie from 1997, another David Lynch film, which should be a lot of fun because if nothing else, probably to to listen to Zan talk about this great scene involving Robert Loggia. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And this is probably my favorite movie that, that stars a convicted murderer. Right. Yeah. There are other movies starring convicted murderers, or maybe not so convicted murderers, looking at you, Naked Gun. That, that would be that would be a, a movie starring a convicted kidnapper and um, breaking an enterer. But yeah, kidnapping. That's when he went yeah. to prison for kidnapping. Right. So anyway, but yeah, this one Robert Blake is in. Mm-hmm. You know, Lost Highway. So this should Greatest be a really interesting Robert Blake discussion. Ever did. Yeah, yeah. And I know people love Beretta, but no, this this movie he does such a great job in this, and he's so creepy as the mysterious mystery man. I'm at your house right now. Call me. <laughs> the call is coming from inside the house. Oh wait, that's a different movie. That's a different movie. That's also a different excellent. Movie. All right. Also an excellent movie. Yes. So that's what I'm up to. But the 
question is now, what are we going to talk about next time, Zan, for episode six of Drunk Cinema? Well, um, I don't know, Charles. I I try to obey, but it's, <laughs> but it's difficult. Right. So we're going to bring in some new recruits, and I'm going to change my hairstyle. Uh-huh. And, uh, <laughs> They put things in our heads, made us Creatures do things. Creatures in our bodies. <laughs> yes, yeah. we just do things. Yeah. Who's been and... holding up the damn elevator? <laughs> she changed her hairstyle. <laughs> so, yeah, next next time on Drawing Cinema Charles, we are going to be breaking out the Romulan ale. And, yes. Um, the, it, it, to commemorate the anniversary of the passing of Leonard Nimoy, right. we will be watching... Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, the greatest Star Trek movie in the history of Star Trek movies. Khan! Khan, you bloodsucker. You're going to have to come down here, Khan. You're going to, You're have, going to, to have to come down, down here. here. You keep missing the targets. Yeah. I don't like to lose. I've done worse than kill you. I've hurt you. And I want to keep on hurting, hurting you. you. Yes. <laughs> From hell's heart. I step at thee. <laughs> So I just yelled Khan really loud, yeah. and Herbs is very confused. And Did you scare her? She just came walking in the room like, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> That's okay. Lori's probably wondering the same thing right now upstairs. Lori's probably like going, oh, God, I know what's going to go on in a couple weeks from now. They're going to watch this stupid movie. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But this one I might actually get Lori to watch with me. So points for that. Yeah. You know, she won't watch Young Frankenstein. For some ungodly reason. Why wouldn't she watch Young Frankenstein? She doesn't like comedies. She doesn't like David Lynch films. She doesn't like comedies. You see what I have to work with here, Mr. Napier. <laughs> I get the David Lynch thing, but not liking comedies. Yeah. I feel like Lori needs more joy in her life. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I, I agree with that. All right. That's that's a whole other podcast um, and psychiatric therapy session. That's a whole so. other psych- ther- psych- psychotherapy session, yeah. But, you know, just, just, you know, you know, so it's out there on the record that Lori is welcome to get drunk and talk about movies with us anytime she wants to. I, I, I definitely appreciate that. And uh, yeah. I will, I will definitely uh, put some movies toward that maybe she would want to join us with. Okay. So does Lori have a favorite movie? She has several favorite movies. Yeah. Okay. But well, what are, what are is, some of them? Give me, give me an idea of what we're talking about here. for Lori. Jurassic Park. Oh yeah, baby. So she could, we could do that one. Put that on the fucking list. Right. Yeah. Let's see what else would be good. Probably the Wonder Woman, the first first Wonder Woman movie. Okay. Okay. I want to preface that. Let's see what else. Probably Sense and Sensibility. <gasps> what? Seriously? She loves period films. Oh so. my god, Charles! Do you know how much I love Sense? Sense and Sensibility and also um, uh, Pride and Prejudice with Kieran Sen- Knightley. Oh, my God. Okay. Sense and Sensibility, yeah. one of my all-time favorite movies. And you know how much I love comeuppance stories, right. Charles. That's one of the best. <laughs> Sense and Sensibility. And fucking Willoughby is on his horse watching Marianne marry Christopher Brandon from afar. It's like the greatest fucking thing. So maybe there's something we can figure out here. Yeah, we'll that's see. awesome. We'll see. Because yeah, because Chris is Chris's favorite movie is Star Wars. So right. Yeah. And I would obviously I will talk that movie whenever because oh I God. talked about it on Gold Standard not too yeah, long ago. We did. Yeah, yeah, we well, did. Are you going to give, it, gonna give us five dollars so we can talk about Return of the Jedi? <sighs> I know, right? Yeah. Cough it up, Fuzzball. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a hairball problem. I know, right? All right. So, everybody, yeah. So, next time here, episode six, we're talking Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. The Wrath of Khan. From 1982. And it's going to be a classic, And obviously. I just, I just, wanted, I just want everybody to know that we're doing this for everyone else. Because... We're not doing it for ourselves? No, because the needs of the many <laughs> outweigh the needs of the few. Or the or one. The one. <laughs> and if you think I got that from Star Trek, you are very wrong. <laughs> that's my that's my uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force Moon and Night impression. That's a very good one. That's yeah, a good one. But, All yeah, right. So. And I will tell you, I will tell you, my yeah. uh, my very personal, very bizarre, very true Leonard Nimoy story. Ooh, there you go. So there's yeah. incentive right there, kids. Yep. So okay, so we got 
Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, a great movie. Mm-hmm. Zan's going to tell us a little story. Yep. And you guys are going to come right back, right? So yeah. Wait for it. So come right back two weeks. We're going to do episode six, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, right here on Drunk Cinema. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Down.